好啊，好啊，好啊。What's up, friends? With all the excitement that I see from a lot of you guys, I assume the reveal was really good. <laughs> Keep it spoiler free. Had a lot spoiled already. But it's height. It's exciting. Poster, please. Yeah, well, we'll see. Watch or edit anything yet? Me, I've only seen stuff that you guys have talked about in Discord every so often. Just no Ziggy. What's wrong with Ziggy? I heard he did a good job. I don't even know where to watch it. Do I just go on like? Do I go on YouTube to watch it? The reveals on YouTube. Do you have a link? I can't find it. I'm fucking stupid. Oh, I found it. Too early to ask what village you're playing Hex Blast Mines. Hi. Thank you. Aurobot? He has not confirmed nor invited me or included me in a single piece of conversation or has told me anything and I'm operating as though uh, it is not happening at this point. We're waiting for you to finish watching the patch. Do I like the new Mind Master? I think it's really good. Hurry up and watch it. No gladiator changes. I saw them say that they it was either gladiator changes or add a second atlas tree. And I think the second atlas tree is probably better. No spoilers. It's okay. I thought I was going to sneeze so bad there. All right. So I'm going to preface this like this. I have not watched this yet. This will be the first time that I am watching this. I don't really know too much about this yet. I um, I don't really know what's essentially coming. I do know it starts with POE 2 stuff and then it goes into the POE 1 stuff. And I know that it should be really exciting. So I'm really excited to watch this and we're going to, I guess, see what happens. Hopefully it's pretty good. I don't know. I have a good feeling. I'm excited. It's opening on Chris Wilson. It can't be bad. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. <laughs> Welcome to our live stream. We have a busy lineup today with announcements for Path of Exile 2, okay. as well as the exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Necropolis, which launches on March 29th. For the first time ever, we'll be releasing this expansion simultaneously on all platforms, PC, Mac, and console. That's cool. That's cool. Twitch drops are enabled on today's live stream. So make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your suffering back attachment. Today's stream will start with Path of Exile 2, where Jonathan will show you our latest announcements. Mark will then take you on a deep dive into the new Path of Exile Necropolis Challenge League, which launches in one week. He'll okay. cover the league mechanics, its deep crafting system, large endgame changes, some improvements to the core Path of Exile campaign, 
and finally oh, some quality of life I was like, features. why is there so much music? We'll then show you our new supporter packs, and we'll head into a live Q&A session where Ziggy D will ask us your questions from Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. I hey guys, like to do group it's time to chat about PoE2 again. No! It's only been it's a few great. months since we talked about it the Mercenary. It got delayed! And yet even Who cares? since then, a huge Move amount on. has changed. <laughs> when we announced the Mercenary, we also showed off a lot of the new capabilities that so our good, engine though. has around I animation and character Don't control. Delay it. Stop Moving while shooting it. was a huge deal in that class, but there were a lot of other more subtle things going on to make it feel good too. Well, in recent times, we've only been showing off new character classes, but one thing I've been really excited about is to go back and apply all the new ideas and capabilities that we have to our old classes too. Today, I'd like to show off the Ranger, and I hope that you guys like what you see. I've lived in this forest all my life. And if there's one thing I've learned, Tornado shot. it's that a ranger must never miss. A beast will hunt you, but it is the cruelty of man I fear. I, I, I'm shocked there's a cinematic. There is no truly <laughs> really? escaping the Count's justice. <laughs> That's cool! Your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until dead. Nope. Let not your happening. souls feed the first ones, and your bodies feed the land. After her! See, I like the WASD. I like that. It looks really good. It looks really clean. The fact that you can move and shoot, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Looks, I, 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 looks great. This exile has changed me. No more running. No more fear. You won't get away this time. Even, like, that, that just looks fantastic. Like, that's awesome. I don't like the UI so much. I like, I like the, the, you can see the boss is off, but I don't like, like, the player UI. I think the player UI probably needs some scrutiny. I like that you hear the mouth. That's pretty cool. I like that I can keep poison on the boss. Else, it, it just it looks really good. Why? Let this be a warning, Gianor. I don't. I don't know. I'm coming for you next. Turn the sound down. All right. I'm I'm okay with that. That looked good. I'm okay with that. When we started to work on the Ranger, we knew we had to make a class with high agility. The dream of fast bow gameplay is legolas, so that's what we wanted to deliver. The starting point is moving while shooting a bow. Any kind of basic arrow skill can be fired while moving with a movement penalty. With a movement penalty. This immediately penalty. gives you a lot more freedom on the battlefield. See, I like the demi. I like this. With a poison burst I like that I can shoot and fire and move movies. at the same time. I think it's really cool. using a lightning arrow to arc lightning around larger packs. For even more mobility, we also have a variety of skills that involve vaulting around the battlefield too. This is Frost Escape. Using it jumps backwards and shoots a freezing arrow at the ground. Really useful if monsters close on you and you need to get away. Once you've landed, if monsters were frozen, it'd be nice to have some way to take advantage of that extra time. See, this looks great. This is where Snipe comes in. But like, in. it's so far Snipe away that like, I'm excited, but I'm not as excited as exactly I want to be, but it right looks time. so good. If you land the right timing, Snipe is guaranteed to produce a critical strike and does a small AOE as well, so it's a great finisher. You can also move while shooting arrow rain skills too. This skill is Lightning Rod. It shoots an arrow into the air that sticks into the ground and does a small AOE. Once the rods are in the ground though, they attract any arcs of lightning that are nearby, causing them to explode again. This means you can stack up a bunch of lightning rods on the ground and bounce lightning between them, doing way more damage. Now this takes care of packs pretty well, but for bigger enemies, I'd like to have something that's gonna enhance my damage output too. This skill is Stormcaller Arrow. Using it what? sticks an arrow into an enemy, after a short period of time, a lightning bolt comes from the sky and strikes them. Detonating arrow? This has a high chance to shock them, 
and shocked enemies take 30% more damage from all sources. Oh, that's cool. That looks if pretty good. If something big walks along, it's a Dude. good idea to throw one of these at them first to enhance your damage before following up with the other I don't know how much I combo. feel about this, this now, whole if I really want to enhance this combo, thing. there are a couple of things I could do using our support gem system. Skills and Path of Exile are granted I, I by items called skill gems. I don't know how I feel about it Each yet. skill I mean, gem really has cool. colored sockets in it. It's and these sockets are for other items called support gems. Support gems I do think the UI skills, needs a little bit of work. I think the UI looks a little outdated of your in terms of like what like First, I'm gonna take this other games are doing. Plus, even like the UI and PoE ones will, it seems a little bit cleaner. Arrow, and I, it would fire I, like what I like the idea of this what they're doing, the number of targets but it looks hit, a little outdated. But that isn't the effect that I'm after. If I add it to my lightning rod skill instead, then when I I'm, fire I'm not taking the nice group of rods. Watching this, this means I'm not that taking I don't any of the UI as space up value. value. I'm sure a lot of it's going to change combo. before it comes out, or a lot of it's going to be updated. But the gameplay itself looks really clean. The only thing I don't like I so might far also is the add UI. faster projectiles to make the lightning rods land faster too. Now, next up, I'm going to grab this chain support gem. Chaining causes many effects to repeat on new targets when you hit them. That's cool. If I add it to my lightning arrow, it will cause the arcs that come out of lightning arrow to strike even more targets, rippling along my line of lightning rods for huge amounts of damage. That's actually really cool. Now, I think we can use support gems to improve Stormcaller arrow as well. Let's start simple. I'm going to chuck less duration on here. This will cause the lightning from the sky to strike a bit faster. Next up, we have a support called Shock Proliferation. This support makes it so that any enemies shocked by the skill will also have the shock jump to nearby enemies, meaning they'll take the extra damage as well. It's just a chance to proc, so it's not going to proc on every single pack, but when it does, a pack will go down ultra quick. Another useful empowering skill is Barrage. Barrage is one of the rare cooldown skills in PoE 2. It enhances whatever your next attack is to fire three oh, times. Oh, see, that looks really cool. With what we have here, I think it might be a good idea to use it with Lightning Arrow. It'll generate three times as many lightning explosions. You could also use it at Twilight just the right mana? moment what was Twilight or any mana? number of other skills depending on what effect you need more of right now. It's very versatile and can be used in a range of situations. Interesting. I saw that. Now, even as mobile as the ranger is, it's still very useful to slow monsters down. And a ranger certainly has quite a few tools to do this. If you're prepared to get up close and personal, we have a skill called Electrocuting Rod. First, jump over the enemy and shoot it into them. Once the rod's in place, any lightning damage they take will build up a special electrocute gauge. Once the gauge is full, the monster is totally suppressed, allowing you to kill them easily. Now, sometimes when you use electrocuting rod, the enemy dies before you get a chance to electrocute them. I think there's another support gem I could add to my lightning arrow to fix this problem. Neural overload will make it easier to electrocute <laughs> enemies. If the skill it's attached to puts them over 50% of their electrocute bar, it will trigger instantly. Oh, it's an electrocute bar. Okay. I was wondering what that bar was. Now, watching this, I'm like, it looks good. It looks clean. It looks awesome. I love that there's like an indicator. I know my face is in the way. I know that. Love that there's an indicator to poison on the health bar. I just think the UI for me doesn't now, really do it. Looks really the well gameplay itself a looks really cool. Enemy. I am but not a big fan of the skill gem stuff. Ability for groups as well. Like this, this whole UI window, I, Nexus to my I'm escape. not a huge fan of, and this I'm makes an reserving my opinion. Frozen enemies. I'll also add deep. I feel like, like I, I know I'm talking over him, but like I feel like I'm going to reserve a lot of my opinion about PoE2 until I play it, and I, I will say, watching the gameplay itself makes me really want to play it. I don't like a lot of the things that I see, but I love a lot of the things that I see. So I'm like, it's like weird love and take relationship. Also, I know there's a lot of like talk about the speed and stuff. And I know that the game in itself is purposely slowed down while watching this so that we could really see what's going on. And it really gives real good visual clarity to the game and it makes it really nice. But I would love to see what it looks like a little bit sped up. Now, in terms of like the skill gems, I know I've mentioned that I'm not a huge fan of like the socket system i actually really like sockets on items but i love the idea that you have more flexibility i would like to see with more gear on and just see how the game progresses and changes and you know i don't want to judge it based on like a two link or a three link or a slow down gameplay but i'll tell you what man slow down gameplay looks awesome freeze to it as well like it doesn't look bad it looks pretty good 
But I want to see. I want to see what it becomes. Now, when I use my frost you know, escape, I want to see what path of exile others players do to break down. it. It would also be good if I had a way to slow enemies down when they're farther away from me as well. So this would be a great time to start getting into the ranger's poison and plant-based skill set. To start Toxic with, rain. let's have a look at Vine Arrow. This skill fires an arrow into the air that creates a small plant now that, that lands. See, like, the visually, plant that is awesome. To nearby enemies, that is slowing great. Them down and poisoning that them. looks fantastic. But it does have another function, And I would too. love that if right the plant now. Gets further and I know poison, we can't have it right now. It transfers that poison to the monsters it's attached to. Normally, you would only be able to get one stack of poison on a monster at a time, but you can put as much poison as you want on this plant. You could just use the plant to slow monsters down and not worry about the poison part. But if you want to go all in on poison, this is the way to do it. Now, if you do want to focus on poisons more, another useful skill is Poison Bloom Arrow. This skill cool. creates I these love plant the jump in the on the ground. That if you wait a little sells while, me so much. Just like any other plant skill, these plants respond well to poison. Shoot the Poison Burst Arrow at enemies nearby and watch your plants grow more and more powerful. Poisoning the pustules causes them to do much more damage and makes them explode much faster as well. I can also add the Pierce support to Poison Burst Arrow. Doing this will mean I get multiple Poison Bursts as it goes through each monster. Okay. Looks good. See, it looks good. It makes me want to play it. Like, this looks good. It makes me want to play it. We also have another skill to make a nice environment for your plants to grow. Gas Cloud Arrow. This skill shoots the ground and creates a cloud of gas that continuously poisons things inside it. Throw your plants down, then put a gas cloud on top. The constant poisoning will make them grow. That's cool. See, that's really cool. Another poison-related skill we have on the Ranger is called Plague Bearer. This is a reservation skill, meaning it uses spirit. When I enable it, I get this counter that counts up whenever I apply poison to a monster. Okay. You can see the counter on the skill increasing as each new monster yes, is nine, poisoned. 13, 15, 16. What happens? Now I'm going to fight these monsters and make sure to poison them as much as I can to build up the counter. Okay. I didn't even notice it in the top left. I was looking at it on the hot bar in the bottom right. It does take quite a while to get the counter up to 100%, but it's worth it. Whenever I choose, I can unleash the poison and a big explosion around my character, dealing a large amount of damage. I, I won't even lie. I didn't even see him press it. It does take quite a while to get the counter up to 100%, but it's worth it. Whenever I choose, I can unleash the poison and a big explosion around my character, that the first time. dealing a large amount of damage. Now, okay. next up, we have a classic, Rain of Arrows. Rain of Arrows looks good. It's simple. Shoot a bunch of arrows in the good. sky, and they rain down for a short time. It's decent AoE and damage at long range. It does. Now, this skill doesn't last too long, but we can change that. It's time to introduce Frenzy Charges. See, I like that he can shoot the Rain of Arrows and then do for other things while firing. On the Ranger, I think that's really with Rain good. Rain of Arrows, they can be used to extend the duration. How do we get some, though? Here we have a skill called Sniper's Mark. Put it on an enemy and it will grant you a frenzy charge when you crit them. Now remember that snipe skill from earlier? That skill guarantees a critical hit. So first we Sniper's Marked an enemy, then we sniped them. And after that, the next rain of arrows will last a really, really long that's time. So, that's long. We still have some weaknesses though. While rain of arrows hits enemies with a ton of arrows, each one doesn't do much damage individually. It would be nice if we had a way to break the armor on enemies so that Rain of Arrows dealt more damage. Thankfully, we have this Corrode Armor support gem, and we can oh, put it on cool. our Gas Cloud Arrow. Corrode Armor causes poison to erode the armor on targets until it's all gone. This will significantly increase the damage that Rain of Arrows does against armored targets. Oh yeah, and one more thing about Gas Clouds. They can be detonated <gasps> with explosions. That's I have cool! an explosive arrow here. Let's check it out. Why didn't you open on that? Sir? Hello? Now, because monsters How and do you not open are likely on that? to have their armor broken, I think there's another useful combo we can do. 
This is an exploit weakness support. This support provides extra bonus damage to targets that have their armor broken. Perfect for what we have going on here. So, those Act are just four. some of the skills we have on the Ranger class in Path of Exile 2. Now that we've seen all these skills, let's see how well they do against a much tougher enemy. It's time to fight the boss Another of the temples, intruder. Thanos. Okay. I love the health bar that it's just on. That's literally my favorite. this gameplay man it's such an it's a, visually it's so much more nicer than what we do right now but like i mean i can understand how people are not gonna like the fact that it takes like 10 years to kill i mean like it takes 10 years to kill, but it's cool i think it's great it's so cool. i think that's super cool I'm okay with it taking a bit if the boss fight is not just weird phases, like hit it a bunch and then it phases and then hit it a bunch and then phases. But like the fact that like you have to do things and think about what you're doing and meticulously plan your skills and aim and fire and work things together, like that's awesome. I, I like that. I think it's I think it's really cool. What'll make what'll what'll really sell this to me is if the loot and the rewards from jumping through all these hoops to kill this boss is worth it. This like has to have some kind of good loot. It has to have some kind of good reward. It has to do something, right? Otherwise, like every level or every end game or every everything being this like crazy in-depth 10 minute to kill, but doesn't drop anything will, will be the thing that kills it. But if this guy is like impactful, and it drops loot, and we can farm it, or target farm it, or magic find him. I'm okay with all of this. I think this is great. It definitely has like, I hate to say this, but it has like a good like last epoch phase. And I think last epoch does a really good job of like boss phases and mechanics and like, but oh yeah, this just reminds me of that. The mount. Check this out. I yes, also like, I think this idea is really cool. While riding the rower, you can shoot <laughs> I think arrows this mount idea is really control. cool. It's pretty overpowered. You can also use your vaulting skills to jump right off the rower's back. Yeah, see, that's Once awesome. the rower doesn't have a rider, it starts attacking monsters. That's so he's great. nice to have a rider, that, even if you're not awesome. riding That's <laughs> awesome. So cool. That said, if you are riding, don't get hit. If you take a heavy stun while on a rower, you'll fall off, and it takes a while to get up. So be careful. So that's what we wanted to show you today. That's cool. Now, there is just one more rather unfortunate bit of news. Delayed. Path of Exile 2's beta is going to That's be delayed. That's fine. If we I'm okay with that. that we would get the beta I'm okay with that. 7th. If it takes and extra time and they the polish it and it's time, good and it works flawless it to and there's no problems, we're happy with. no issues, we're still and it's going to be doing okay in June, that. but we're going to be delaying the beta okay later that. in the year. I don't have an exact date for you today, but it should be towards the end of the year. In the meantime, you can still play Path of Exile 1, of course. Now, speaking of POE 1, we also have the 324 expansion to announce. I'm going to hand over to Mark, the game director on POE 1. No, nah, give me Chris! <laughs> we had a lot of fun making this one. So let's just get straight into it. All right, lay it on me. Path of Exile Necropolis. Lay it on me. Cold flesh, yes. dirt, maggots, and ghosts. Our job is to keep them where they belong. It's your first night, so you'll need this. A ghostly lantern for ghastly tinkering. Wait, what is this? This is the best part about watching this later. I could pause this. 
I can pause this and look at this. Pack size, pack density. Okay. You Whoa, what is this? To peer into the souls of the dead. You learn how to twist them. Meet me in the necropolis. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. What was that? No. Meet me in the necropolis. What is this? Armor is armor items. Are thick. What the? 300 wait wait what the hell is this you can fracture and exploit what is this pilfer shiny things from a corpse but you can pilfer glorious things from a soul i need a grave digger well, we already have expedition Tier 17 map, multiple passive trees! Scarab overhaul? Pen ultimate, but what the ha what? I'm so confused right now. The job's hard. I I'm, pays what did I just watch? What do you say? <laughs> what the hell is that? In the Necropolis League, you will encounter Undertaker Aramor. Okay. A man collecting the scattered spirits of the Eternal Empire for okay. a mysterious purpose. These spirits have begun to haunt the monsters of Rayclast, unleashing their ancient fury and sorrow onto the world. The Undertaker will provide you with the Lantern of Aramor. Okay. A powerful family heirloom which can illuminate the wrathful spirits haunting monsters throughout Rayclast. Is this like a sentinel thing? With it, the Undertaker hopes to employ you to rid Rayclast of this menace and further his cryptic cause. The Lantern can be used when entering any new area. When peering through it, you can examine the spirits haunting that area. The Lantern also allows you to manipulate them letting you configure which monsters are affected by which monsters. That's so cool. It would be wise to take your time with your decisions here, for the spirits are not forgiving. When peering through the lantern, you can also see extra details about the packs of monsters in the area. Rowers here are considered common, whereas the water elementals are more scarce. If you want things to be easier, you can put the more difficult spirits on the elementals, which you'll encounter less often. We've tried to make sure that by engaging with the Lantern, you are able to intelligently control the difficulty in the Necropolis League. Oh, that's awesome. That's the spirits great. come in a number of forms which represent the danger they pose. For example here, the infested vultures are servant haunted, causing them to deal a small amount of increased damage. But the vole's vanguard are noble haunted, causing them to deal a large amount of increased damage. As you reach higher level areas in Rayclast, the tear and number of spirits that are haunting monsters will generally increase. Your game knowledge can help you here. If you're aware of the composition of a monster pack, this means certain mods will be easier to manage. For example, the mod that increases a pack's damage for every monster killed has no effect on packs with a single monster, like a devourer. However, if we found a spirit that makes the strongest monster in a pack deal 100% more damage, well, I'm going to avoid the Devourer. You might have noticed that the Lantern of Aramor provides other useful the information. The only thing such as the I don't like is that this seems like it'd be very difficult for somebody starting this league. Because he said this is where your game knowledge comes into play. And I feel really bad for newer, like watching this, I'm really excited and I can't wait to interact with this. But watching this in terms of like, from a new player perspective, I'm a little worried types of abilities monsters use, or the damage types they <coughs> deal. So for those who are less familiar with how these monsters work, this can be a great way to learn what you're up against. 
The spirits are constantly moving throughout Rayclast, so if you are finding a campaign area too difficult, you can just wait a few minutes and peer through the lantern again to see what's changed. Okay. Of course, powerful spirits beget powerful rewards. There are two reasons why you might want to face a challenge now and then. Firstly, not all the spirits are malicious. Sometimes the monsters aren't haunted at all, but are instead devoted. These can grant basic rewards like increased experience, or bigger rewards like spawning the Nameless Seer, an NPC that's that will grant guy. you a single unique item after you defeat oh, all of the packs affected cool. by that spirit. The more I take back monsters everything you I just said. in the previous area before <laughs> using the take lantern, back. the more likely the devoted monsters will appear in the next area. Monsters haunted by higher tier spirits will increase the chance of the devoted appearing even more, meaning that sometimes it's worth putting the hardest modifier possible on very common monsters, if you're brave enough. Again, we've tried hard here to allow players to customize the danger and rewards as much as they can. 600%. I'm I'm, I'm, is an I'm undertaker, I'm sold. It's cool. And you can probably guess what we're taking to him. The second main reward from the Necropolis League is monsters with unresolved anguish. Once slain, their corpses need extra care from the Undertaker, and he will offer to take them back to his necropolis and store them in the morgue. Time to earn your keep. When you are ready, you can visit the morgue to view the monsters you have collected, and then get to work burying them in one of many graves in Aramor Cemetery. For example, we will bury this Katava's Herald. Aramor's mysterious soul experiments can coalesce powerful items, here I've chosen to create a pair of boots. These boots are useful for my character, but aren't exactly okay. what I hoped for. And this is where the Necropolis crafting system really shines. You'll have noticed that the corpse we collected earlier had a crafting effect on it. In fact, all collected corpses do. If you bury multiple corpses in the cemetery, all adjacent corpses can be exercised at once to create one item. All of the crafting effects on those corpses will apply to that same item. This allows you to have either one or many different crafting projects ongoing Whoa! in the cemetery. <laughs> For example, next time I try to create boots, I could bury corpses that increase the chance of getting move speed modifiers. To go further, I could use these to generate higher tier modifiers. Then I could try to bias it towards being an evasion pair with this. Finally, I'll apply some crafting effects that improve the probability of getting good rolls. Now, That's let's craft wild. our item and see what we get. That's wild. As you can see now, we have a much better pair of boots, forged from the souls of our enemies. That's cool. You could even use the entire cemetery no to craft way. one item. <laughs> there is always something you can do That's to try cool. and ensure your item will be as best as it can be. We hope to see some really crazy grave crafts. If you are wait. lucky, you might find wait, corpses wait, wait, with iron and souls of our adjacent and find the corpses of famous if they're fractured is that what that is they're fractured if you are lucky you might find corpses with meta crafting modifiers these can be buried to manipulate your crafting projects in more drastic ways this one increases the potency of all crafting effects of adjacent undead corpses oh that's another cool. meta crafting modifier gives a chance to drop an extra item from your craft with all the same crafting outcomes applied. That's cool! All you have to do is bury a lot of undead monsters. May the ferocity of Throldana free you of your anguish and aid this soldier so that you may shield them from harm. That's cool. You can also craft new unique items exclusive to the Necropolis League using this system. As you explore Rayclast, you might find the corpses of famous Eternal Empire families. And when you bury an entire family together and exorcise them, they will thank you with a unique specific to their lineage. That's cool! Ah, oh, that's awesome! For example, the Navalius Inheritance Belt. 
I'll give you a moment to check that out. Yeah, that, I, I saw this earlier, and that's You insane. can use other corpses alongside them to grant implicit mods, manipulate the values Passes of explicit mods, that's and more. Cool. In that's this case, cool. with the Parandas Pact, you can even like, change the modifiers it generates. I like that it takes a while to craft the item. It reminds me a lot of like a Black Desert Online kind of thing. Cause like NVIDIA, when you go to like enhance or Black Desert, you go to like enhance to like upgrade your weapon. It's got this bar and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And like, it seems kind of silly at first, but that like that suspense of what you're going to make. Well, like, yeah, it could be aggravating every so often, but like it really builds this like really cool feeling. I do hope they give us the option to skip it and just explode the item because sometimes you're just like in a rush and you want things to cool, you know, sometimes you want things to go, but I definitely think it's an item that like, or a, a thing that we, I hope they like allow us to skip the, the stuff. All right. This unique is a jewel which adds extra stats to passive skills in a radius when socketed into the passive skill tree. The stats it adds are randomly generated, but you can bias it towards a specific type by using other crafting effects, such as this one, which increases the chance of getting life modifiers. Let's see what we get. Like, just give me the item! Come on, what do we get? <laughs> Damn, we didn't get it this time. I guess we're gonna have to go and collect more corpses. Damn! <laughs> of course, you can trade the corpses away to other players. Ah, you All can you need trade to do is purchase them. empty coffins from the Undertaker and use them on your corpses in the Thank mall, God. which will itemize them. Another item in the Necropolis League that you can find are Embers of the All Flame. These are monster spirits that remain living in the All Flame, a powerful ancient artifact of Rayclast. These, this, there used to be the coin system used to have these. You can set them free by placing them in the Lantern of Aramor and defeating them. These embers drop throughout Rayclast as itemized packs of monsters. That's cool. You are able to use these packs to replace the packs in areas. For example, we have found this all flame ember of Tarfor. Whoa, wait, did we that say tattoos? By packs to replace the packs in areas. Pack monsters can drop tattoos? For example, we have found this Hold on. ember of Tarfor. <laughs> we can now go to enter the next area and replace one of the monster packs in here. You can see we have also gotten one of the devoted modifiers to appear. We can pair up the Karui ancestors with this modifier, making them even more rewarding. Let's go ahead and replace the tentacle miscreations. However, when replacing packs, you want to double check their Drop density, Karui as the tattoos. new pack will inherit the density of the replaced pack. The Karui ancestors we have now added to our area can even drop basic variations of tattoos. If you aren't aware, this is an item type from the Trial of the Ancestors League, which can be used on passive skills to change what they do. There are many different types of itemized packs. You can find Breach and Legion monsters okay. that drop splinters. Sure. Untainted packs that provide insane amounts of experience. That's awesome. And even simple frogs, which can be used to replace difficult monsters to make life easier. And of course, these ember monsters can be raised as specters too. Finally, let's discuss how this league works in in-game maps. Each in-game map will allow you to manipulate it using the lantern on the map device UI. However, instead of randomly cycling every few minutes, it is fixed to that map. Once you view the map through the lantern, you cannot remove it from the map device. So you can't trade that map away now that you've seen it is too difficult for you. Uh, or has monsters in it that you'd rather avoid. Uh, like porcupines. We're also trying something new this time around. During the Necropolis League, there will be support for the League on the Atlas Passive Tree. That's cool! Multiple clusters will be there, allowing you to enhance the gameplay, customize it, and even change its behavior in meaningful ways. That's awesome! One way that you can change the crafting in a meaningful way is with the Prospero's Wager Keystone. With this keystone, all the monsters with unresolved anguish come with this crafting modifier, which causes them to generate a random craft when buried. This means instead of pre-planning your crafts, you have to adapt to them on the fly to get the best results. These clusters will not be available in Standard League. What does that mean? In 324, we've made a plethora of changes to the endgame. We've introducing new bosses, adding another tier of maps, 
and streamlining the Atlas. The most difficult and most rewarding content in Path of Exile can be found in uber pinnacle bosses, such as the Maven and the Searing Exarch. Okay. Currently, the only way to access these bosses is by allocating specific keystones on the Atlas passive tree. While this system offers a nice element of control, it causes a problem. Rewards and access to the non-Uber variants are now economically priced around the rewards of the Uber fights. This means it is wasteful to run the non-Uber variants instead of simply selling them. Another problem that we noticed is the difficulty jump between the Pinnacle and Uber Pinnacle content was relatively large, and there wasn't obvious content that could bridge this gap. Many players would give up on their characters before being able to defeat the Uber Pinnacle boss. But there's no point ever to like. In 324, we will be making some changes to this. The, 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 we problem, are the, the problem is that wasn't Pinnacles were too hard. There was just no point. Like, you could just get everything from Valdo maps or you could buy it all on trade. And the only time that you were ever really forced to do Pinnacle bosses were you played SSF. Like, they were cool. They were awesome. They were a challenge. But they, they, they never felt like, at least for me, like, Pinnacle bosses never felt like. I needed to do them. So if my character couldn't do them, I was just kind of like, whatever. Removing the keystones that give access to the uber pinnacle bosses from the Atlas tree, and instead we'll be adding a new set of fragments that Whoa, give you wait, access to what? this content. Hold on. Where do you get these fragments? Yeah, where? We are adding a new tier of maps. What do you mean? Tier 17 maps. Where do Valdo maps go? Which not only give you access to the uber pinnacle content, but also test your characters in new ways. They feature a new set of bosses, uber monsters, and a new tier of modifiers that can roll on the maps. That's cool. There are five new tier 17 maps in total with some surprising boss fights at the end. We'll look at a couple today and the rest you'll have to discover for yourself. That's cool. First, we have the Citadel map. This map contains an ancient Kalgurin Citadel. You will encounter many expedition monsters as the signature packs throughout the map. At the end, you will fight Uber Uhtred. This is a version of a boss from Expedition League, with all its abilities and mechanics enhanced. Uber Uhtred will even be able to summon two other Expedition bosses to aid it during the fight. That's cool! I'm in! Secondly, we have the Fortress map. This map is an impregnable fortress, guarded by monsters from the Heist League. Nice! At the end, you will encounter an Uber version of the Unbreakable. Nice! Again, it has enhanced abilities and mechanics you'll have to learn and overcome. Each of the tier 17 map bosses has a chance to drop a unique item, allowing for some target farming. However, these aren't entirely new unique items. Instead, we've taken other unique items, removing them from the core drop pool and rebalancing them to fit here. One example is this reworked version of Wraith Lord. Wait, it what does this do? It has four abyss sockets and allows you to summon an additional specter for each ghastly eye jewel socketed into it. That's cool! Another example is Mana Storm. This has been rebalanced to grant a lot more damage than before, alongside some more impactful mana stats. If you can get lucky rolls. Oh! Alongside adding <laughs> tier 17 maps, we have also changed the uber pinnacle bosses to have completely distinct unique item drop pools from that's their non uber nice. okay, that, That's awesome. This means that's there great. is a reason to farm both versions. That's great. Let's take a look at the shaper versus the uber shaper. The Shaper will drop these uniques. Sure. Voidwalker, Shaper's Touch, Solstice Vigil, and Dying Sun. Yeah. Whereas the Uber Shaper will drop these. Echoes oh. of Creation, Sublime Vision, oh! Entropic Devastation, Starforge, and a new unique belt called the Tides of Time. Another example of a new That's unique cool! is this helmet from the Uber Eater of Worlds, Ravenous Passion. And these gloves from the Uber Searing Exarch, the Celestial Brace. Each of the Uber Pinnacle bosses has a new unique added to their drop pools. That's cool. Okay. We've identified another major problem with the end game we'd like to address. Sure, what? With every expansion added to the game, we have been increasing the complexity of running maps. Yes. It's at the point now where a player must repeatedly execute a large sequence of steps to run maps efficiently. Yeah, it's miserable. It can be easy to forget critical steps, and it can be tiring to repeat them. Very. To solve this, we are removing some systems, but are keeping what is good about them. The two main systems we've removed are Sextants and the Master Mission Selector. Yeah, no more it is sextants. not our intention to dull the content, <laughs> however. We have completely reworked Scarabs to include God. most of the options that were previously covered by those mechanics, and many, many more. 
Let's take a look at some of them. Commonly, you might find scarabs that simply grant access to different content. Here, we have a scarab that causes beyond demons to spawn when killing monsters in your maps. And here, we have one that adds a delirium mirror. Each type of scarab now has multiple versions, so if you want to fully invest in a type of content, scarab. you can do so. Here's a suite of ultimatum scarabs. This ultimatum scarab adds an ultimatum encounter to a map. This ultimatum scarab of bribing then causes that ultimatum encounter to grant better rewards and its monsters to yield more experience. Okay. This ultimatum scarab of dueling will cause that ultimatum encounter to always guarantee the trial master boss fight at the end. Oh, thank Assuming God. you can survive oh, through Oh my the God, rounds. thank God. This ultimatum scarab of catalyzing will cause all rewards from that ultimatum to be catalysts instead that of other rewards. And finally, this ultimatum scarab of inscription will cause all catalyst rewards from that ultimatum to be inscribed ultimatums instead. There are plenty of others. If you enjoy divination card farming, you might want to use these. This divination scarab of curation causes more divination cards to drop for each different favored map you have selected. But it also causes whatever map you're running to only drop <laughs> divination cards from those favored maps. So if you want to try and aim for your mage blood and don't want to just farm Crimson Temple, then this scarab is for you. Thank God! This divination scarab of completion causes your divination cards to have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead. That's for crazy! Dopamine. Basically, there are now just a Wait, lot of scarabs. Wait, what is... Hold on! <laughs> Oh, I, I can't. You might have also noticed that they no longer have tears. Scarabs are now all world drops. You can get them anywhere. Some might be rarer than others, but the intention is that there'll be a lot more options than before and more interesting combinations to consider. If you want to target specific scarabs, Betrayal has been updated to include most of them and you will need to relearn which ones come from where. While this system is allowing you to heavily invest in one type of content, it is reducing your capacity for variety. To address sure. this, we have massively increased access to content on the Atlas Passive Tree. You are now able to reliably get different leagues like Breach or Legion from just your Atlas Passives. Regarding Master Missions, content such as Incursion, Delve, Betrayal and Bestiary, these two are now accessible with Scarabs and have more reliable investment options on the tree. Not only this, you can now get Jun, Einha, Alva, and Nico to appear together in the same map. I don't know that. I don't know if that's good yet. We have also removed some keystones such as Wandering Path, Thank fucking Grand God. Design, and Growing Hordes. But I've added some new ones too. For example, Unwavering Vision. <laughs> Thank God. Back to basics. Wait, 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 that was seventh gate. Your maps randomly have between zero and 80% more modifier effects. That's cool. And thorough exploration. Wait, Affliction Wisp! And we have added some new notables such as Remarkable Relics, which allows you to try find better variants of scarabs. Mounting Modifiers, which increases the values of modifiers on your maps by 2% for each explicit modifier. And Tainted Carapaces which is just one in a set of many that allow you to target farm specific types of scarabs. These are just a few of the many new notables that can be found on the Atlas Passive skill tree. Lastly, we are giving you more flexibility in what content you want to run in the end game. In 324, you can now have multiple copies of the Atlas That's tree, the best change in the whole which game. Which can be swapped between maps at your leisure. <laughs> That's the whole change in the best game. You can unlock up to game. two extra trees for a total of three <laughs> That's the by best progressing change. through the end game and completing core content. <laughs> Oh my god. When you open a map, you can select which tree you would like to use. Oh my god. For a given league, you'll never feel constrained to playing your endgame a single way. That's great. You can also label your trees to easily identify which one has which content. With all this combined, we're hoping to see new endgame strategies shine through. While playing through the campaign in 324, That's amazing. you'll notice a myriad oh of small god. improvements and surprises. The fundamentals of the campaign are still intact, but we've scattered fun encounters and secrets throughout Rayclast. What does that mean? The Dweller of the Deep has been trapped. What does that mean? What are these ritual shrines doing in the Northern Forest? Why is there rituals? And why are they giving me omens? Why are they giving you omens?
This device looks safe. I should definitely use this on my item. No, you should not in the camp. Why is that in the camp? There are plenty more encounters to discover. <laughs> we'll continue adding more surprises in future. How releases. are you not immediately so logging in? Who is act and Who is actively complaining about all this stuff to do with a campaign? How are you? A how? How? How are people? Have I can't. I can't, dude. Previous I'm done, dude. Is I'm done. We released a large number of transfigured skill gems. I, I These can't. This is like oh, of how? This skill is great. Gems that function in very different ways, allowing for more build and gameplay variety. At the time, our aspirations were higher than we could achieve. We planned more gems than we could make. So, in 324, we're adding another set of transfigured gems that we have now finished. Sure. I shot, incinerate, artillery ballista. Nice. Tornado, elemental hit. Okay. Kinetic blast. Nice. Poisonous concoction. Nice. And lastly, summon holy relic. Hopefully those of you who missed your favorite skill having a transfigured variant will get that here. We will certainly be adding more of these in the future, especially for skills that are missing them still. Of course, we'll also be doing a balance pass on the existing transfigured gems. One of the main ones we're looking at is Henetic Bolt of Fragmentation. Oh, it's dead. As a result of this change, it is clear <laughs> that the end game potential of the Wanda archetype really starts to suffer, mostly in the single target Is it not department. dead? Due to this, we've added the new support gem, Sacred Wisps. This support gem causes supported skills to create two attached wisps for a duration. With these wisps, whenever you attack, they have a chance to also use the same skill, if you have enemies in your presence. And if there are any rare or unique enemies, they will always use the skill. How? How is that not immediately used on Tornado Shot? I, just log in bow skill. That leads us into all the other quality of life features we're introducing in 324. And there's a shit. Wands only? Many of these have been revealed in teasers already. Dang. Here's a quick summary. We've added the automation and call to arm this. skill gems. For being able to trigger instant <laughs> skills this. and war cries. I hope I'm wrong. I'm hoping this is awesome. I hate this. <laughs> you can now hold down control and left click to automatically apply certain currency orbs until they achieve the desired result. Or you run out. This is fine. For example, you can hold down fusings until you reach maximum links. That's fine. You will be able to control, beautiful. shift, click currency Absolutely into a trade beautiful. window to automatically move all of that currency at once from your inventory. It's great. Detonate Dead now has clearer telegraphing effects. Still going to die to it. Can't see anything when in Endgame. It's not going to matter. The item hover will always be visible. This it is easily... No this is easily the best change in the entire league. ...to mouse back and forth to see the results of your crafts. When you use a Val Orb on a map, the map no longer has a chance to become unidentified. Also not sure if I'm Instead, a fan of this or not it adds yet. a new implicit. We've created a set of implicits that affect the areas in fun ways. Related to that, corrupted and mirrored items can now be identified. Breach hands now open upon approach, and no longer need to be clicked. Upgrades to Pantheon powers now apply to all characters in a league. This is you awesome. You no longer need to grind wonderful. divine vessels on each new Absolutely character. wonderful. With Harvest Crafting, you can now re-roll Uber Elder Fragments. Fragments dropped by the Shaper cannot be re-rolled into fragments dropped by the Elder, and vice versa. Regarding Betrayal, we're removing Ashling's Crafting Bench as a reward. Instead, Veiled Orbs now perform that function. They remove a mod and replace it with a Veiled mod. These orbs now drop from Katarina and are no longer a world drop. That's fine. Flasks can now be corrupted by Val orbs, giving random minus 10 to plus 10 quality. I don't know if I like that. The capability that. <laughs> to add extra quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from Betrayal. The Betrayal bench craft that converts an amulet to a talisman has been moved to bestiary, and thus can be traded. Maven invitations no longer drop. Instead, when I you love have completed this witnessing all bosses required to go to I the love Maven's arena, change. you can just talk to Karak, and he'll open a map device window with the invitation already in there. I think this change is ready great. Ready to be rolled. Valdo's maps that granted invitations now give scarabs. No more having to waste guardian kills to try get invitations to drop. Next up, we're going to be talking about our new League supporter packs. Today, we're launching two new series of supporter packs. The Solar and Eldritch Packs. Each okay, in terms of everything going on, supporter packs 
whatever. I, I, I'm not buying. I can't, I can't buy them anyways. I've got too much going on. But in terms of everything else, in terms of everything else, in terms of everything else, I am sold. This league has me hyped out of my mind. Hyped out of my mind. I am so excited to log in. I am, I'm so, so excited. It looks great. It looks fantastic. All I know is I need to, now I need to, you know, <laughs> I just need to go read the patch notes and see what we're logging in. But I am, I'm very grateful for what I saw. The PoE2 stuff is like, whatever. The PoE2 stuff's okay. Um, I'll be more excited closer to PoE2. I'll definitely be more excited then. As far as like PoE1 goes, I can't wait to log in. I do know that <laughs> I'm going to go... I have to go figure out what I'm doing. I got to figure out if I'm like leak starting hex blast. I got to figure out if I'm group playing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I, as far as leak starting stuff goes, I'm sure within the next 24 hours, I'll have it all figured out. I'll start figuring that out and get that out to you guys. I know a lot of people ask, what are you starting? What are you doing? What's the plan? I don't know. I will say, um, as far as things go, if you like want to know about the leak start or like what I'm thinking about or what I'm planning, uh, make sure you guys keep an eye on the Twitch, keep an eye on the Discord, keep an eye on the YouTube, stuff like that will be great. But as far as everything else goes, um, yeah, man, I'm excited. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, all right. Time to go read patch notes and look at the rest of it. I'm, yes, let's go. <laughs> uh, go look at the turtle. Play the turtle. I don't, I, I, I literally can't buy it. I can't afford it. It's irrelevant because I can't buy it. I will play it for you guys, but I can't afford it. Chair so it doesn't do anything. The full pack's face value and points alongside several exclusive microtransactions. Great though, but the, these packs are only available for the duration of the Necropolis League and will leave the store forever when it ends. As always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic and do not affect your character's power or progression in any way. The Solar series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. The Cosmos Weapon Effect adorns your weapon with stars. Hitting enemies causes cosmic energy to spill out into the area around them. The Radiant Orb of Chance Extra Effect projects the outcome of items you've used an Orb of Chance on above your head. Remember to congratulate other exiles in town if you see them chance a powerful unique item. Shine boldly with the Solar Knight Armor Set. The power of the sun radiates from your body, getting more and more intense as you use skills and emitting solar flares as you run. With the Supernova Level Up Extra Effect, the dead will be raised from the ground around you before being obliterated and turned to ash by an epic supernova whenever you level up. This one is my personal favorite. The Cosmic Turtle Hideout lets you travel the infinite expanse of the cosmos atop the back of a colossal turtle. Carry the weight of the sun on your back with the Solar Guardian back attachment. Witness it grow larger and larger as the energy of slain enemies is funneled into it. When it reaches its maximum size, it goes supernova and turns into a black hole, forever drifting throughout Rayclast. The Eldritch Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. Are you wondering if we moved the stash in the latest patch? Don't be fooled, because with the Mimic Stash Pet, players can transform into an image of a stash when in a town or hideout and scare unsuspecting exiles. I like that. This pet follows behind you with its terrifying hand walking the rest of the time. The Shaper's Slam That's what you're wondering? What are you wondering? Sends slain unique enemies into a final abyss of unending darkness. The Eldritch Hunger Armor Set contains a beast that demands you to feed it by embracing your bloodlust. Watch it grow in power the more you kill until it bursts from the shell of the helmet. Are you able to satiate its hunger? It's only thirty dollars, much reasonable than ninety. Look, I can't afford it anyways, and I'm not gonna go look at like looking at this is like having me like look at this is just like being like the guy like you're the guy in the mall looking into the window and you know you can't afford it because real life's kicking your ass and it's like it, i don't like it's irrelevant right like who just wanted to show you the turtle you can move on but i can't afford the fucking turtle so do i care 
Are you gonna give me the ninety dollars for the turtle? You know, no, I don't go window shopping at the fucking Porsche. No, <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> Maybe somebody will buy a turtle. No, give me the money so I can pay bills instead. <laughs> I do. I sure as shit don't. It's never worth it. Yeah, there are there are other things. You go to the motorcycle dealership all the time. Jesus. How about Bills and the Turtle? Sure. This guy hates turtles. No. All right. I need background music. Hold on. I'm gonna go fucking turn on the game so we have something in the background. Let's get a wealthy best friend. Are you gonna be my wealthy best friend? Are you it? Let's go. I I am a big fan of the changes. I think a lot of the changes to the game coming out are really good. I know we play in an extremely zoomer mentality. Thank you for gifting out subs. I had to turn alerts off because I was recording, by the way. Um, and I turned off alerts. Thank you for gifting five subs. I appreciate that a lot. It helps. It really does. I turned off alerts during that because I was recording the live reaction so I could put it on YouTube. Um, I know a lot of people are really, really into speed running the campaign. I know a lot of people have a very big zoomer mentality. I know a lot of people don't want to deal with the campaign at all. And I think a lot of that comes down to the campaign just being boring and fucking miserable and not worth it. Do I think the changes to the campaign are cool? Absolutely. Do I think the changes to the campaign help the newer player? Absolutely. Do I think that's great? Yes. Do I think you have the right to be upset that your experience from the campaign to maps is going to take longer? Sure, absolutely. But overall, I don't see it being a bad thing. Like, I know you have to interact with the league mechanic every zone you go in. That's a pain in the ass for sure. And it's always going to be a pain in the ass. For me personally, I always hated the fact that I always felt bad about having to deal with the league mechanic. Right? I always felt bad that every league, I would always want to deal with the league mechanic and I would always be punished for using the league mechanic in terms of time. Right? I always felt bad about that. But now knowing that like, it's something you have to do, as long as it's good and enjoyable, it'll be great. You know? Such an annoyance for speedrunners. Yeah, but who are you pissing off? 1% of the 99 percenters? Maybe 1%? Maybe 1% of the player base you're pissing off? What's changing with the axe? You have to do the lead mechanic in every zone. You have to do the lead mechanic in every zone. You can't go on without doing the lead mechanic. As far as like I, I, I'm the same as dead. I think it might be good. It might be bad. I don't know. I don't know. But do I, am I looking forward to the fact of trying it? Absolutely. How many days before the patch comes buffing it out? They're not going to double down on it. They're going to leave it alone. Just how they didn't double down and change the left click stuff. It's going to be overtuned. Of course it's going to be overtuned. But it randomizes it. Check out the home page. I want to look at the patch notes though. It's, I don't care that it's going to be overtuned, right? It should be hard, right? It should be hard. Right? It should be hard until we get gear. I'll just skip the league. Hey, go play PO. Uh, go play BDO. You don't know if it's in the patch notes. What is?
You can key bind for portals now. That's pretty cool. Mark had a really solid answer to the left mouse button. What was the answer? I feel like the interview might be too long to like sit through. He said, get fucked, deal with it. How many hours I'm going to sing it in this one? He said, if you're using a skill on cooldown, they should have just be baked into the passive tree. If it's being used as a passive, why isn't it already a passive? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's true. I saw another take that was really interesting, and I was talking about this in Discord earlier today that said, um, left click in its current state functions as two actions on one. And according to terms of service, we can't currently have two actions on one click. So if they leave in left click as move and left click as detonate or left click as move and left click as X, then they would have no grounds to ban people for using They would have no grounds. How's the two actions? It's move and detonate. Move and ability. Attack move is two different interactions, isn't it? Because you have to left click, then right click. No ground to what? No ground to ban people for using macros. Do that with any skill. Let me make sure I understand what you're saying first. Thanks for the prime, buddy. Are we excited for changes? Very excited. Just got here. Macro like numlock. From my understanding, you can't numlock macro. Uh, it's supposedly bannable. That's what I was told. Oh, I see what you're saying. That this will attack and move. I see what you're saying. I don't know. Do I know what I'm starting? I don't know. What did I think? I think it's really good. I'm really excited about it. I recorded the reaction though. Uh, Undertaker. Nope. The Undertaker bestows. Nope. Examine the spirits. Nope. New content features. The following uniques have been added to the core drop. Well, Storm's Gift, Name Taker, Practice the Bird of Shadows. I don't know what any of these are. Added new intelligence support gem, Sacred with Support skills that can be used with wands. That's cool. Okay. Automation, sure. Call to arms, whatever. New transfigured gems, sure. Added new currency, Veiled Scarab, which reveals a random... Wait, added a new currency item, Veiled Scarab, which reveals a random scarab when clicked. That's fucking cool! Veiled Chaos needs Veiled Orbs. They now remove a random modifier and add a random Veiled modifier. Yeah, we know. The following currency is now stacked at 20. Exalts, Regals, Divine, Stack Decks. Crusaders, Redeemers, Hunters, Warlords, and Kindling, Instilling, Tainted, Exalted Orbs. That's cool. Okay. Added Cosmic King, Awakening, Synthesis, Reality, Devouring, Blazing Fragments. That's cool. Snowing at my friend's place. I feel bad for them. Added 14 unique items. Added mini map icons for strong boxes. I think this is really good. I think this one's really good too. Fun encounters and secrets have been scattered through a raid class. Some of the fundamentals of the campaign are still intact. The crafting recipe for unlock movement speed can now be found in the city of Sarn. Alt arts, whatever. 374 more Valdo maps. 73 unique foils. The witches receive new audio 
dialogue for Path of Exile, or part two of Path of Exile. Trade notification, increase the volume of party invitations. Shield Crusher the Chieftain has received new effects. I called the sex and delete. I said the same thing. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. The most difficulty rewarding content we know. In addition, the difficulty jumping between the pinnacles and Uber was relatively large. There wasn't enough content. Most players gave up, sure. Instead, we've added a new set of fragments. Okay, these fragments have been attained in the new tier 17 maps. 20% quality unmodifiable. There are five new maps. The Dark Seer Unique Scepter has plus two level of all spell skill gems. Previously one and no longer has global damage. A divine orb can be used. Okay. Sure, mana storm, we don't care. Wraith Lord. Okay. These changes do not apply to existing items. Oh wow. The Yoke of Suffering unique ailment has takes five to ten percent increased damage for each different type of ailment. This is this is huge. This is pretty big. This is pretty big. I think this is big too. In order to challenge the Uber bosses, you must access either their non Uber version. That's fine. Place five of the fragments of the map device to challenge your relative Uber bosses, and you know you are arranging them in the right order. Place five of the same fragment. Place five of the same fragment in the map. Wait, place five. Place five of the same fragment in the map device to challenge the relevant Uber Pinnacle boss. You know, Leon, you need to worry about. Okay. So, do I need the four Shaper fragments plus the Uber fragment? The fifth slot in the map device is now unlocked by completing a non-Valdo tier 17 map. I love this. I love this. 5x Uber frags. Void does now provide tier 16 drops have a 0.5% of here with tier 17. <gasps> Ooh. I love that it's not behind Legion anywhere. I think that's great. I'm so glad with each expansion. Yeah, we know. Solve this for removing sex and master missions. That's fine. I'm okay with that. You can no longer earn the map. I'm fine with that. Sexes can no longer drop and surveyor compasses are no longer offered. That's fine. Existing awakens all be converted to veiled scarabs. Thank that's fine. I'm okay with this. That's great. That's fine. Previous sources of sex and sensor rewards such as Legion Ritual Incursion and Sexes offers for purchase by Kira can be replaced with scarabs. Sanctum question mark. Saying there's going to drop a lot of scarabs. Saying there's going to drop a lot of scarabs. Where are you getting the two outside of the parentheses from? How do you know it's multiplicative? Each provide 0.5% per socketed void stone. Yeah, isn't it? 
So each one is 0.5 percent for per void stone on it. Sounds good. So isn't it zero one one five two? But that's what the wording says. Eat. It's zero point five per stone on every stone. There's four stones. Each fucking void stone says it has a 0.5% chance to drop a tier 17 map per stone equipped. So if you have four stones equipped, each one is 2%, which makes it a, that's fucking, that wording sucks. That wording's fucking dog shit. It's 8%, but has some sort of diminishing returns. It's probably high because you need five fragments. Has big diminishing returns. Oh, we dropped thought. Yeah, we even if it's even if it's four percent, that's a lot, right? Even if it's gonna be like four percent, it's gonna be a lot. No more map dupe nodes. How do you know there's no more map dupe nodes? Wandering path deletion. I mean, it doesn't slow down that much. It's fine, right? The Alex tree is not out yet. They change what the dupe nodes do. Oh, I haven't, I haven't read these yet, my guy. Do you skip the Q and I? I did. I did. What fragments do you need for tier seventeen? The tier seventeen map drops the fragment. You need to do tier 17 maps to get a fragment. Each of the maps will drop a unique fragment to a specific boss. Farm that map five times, get five fragments, open boss. Uh, you're a little upset. You're upset about what? I didn't see anything that you're upset about. Did I, 
I don't know what you're upset about, dude. I didn't see anything that you said in cap. So you're yelling. Uh, did you type so I'm fucking confused, dude. Ignore me. Do you don't need a fragment to run? No, you just get the tier 17 map. You just run the map. I don't remember where I was. The cruise will passive. Wait, the crucible passive skill that causes an item to sell for a now sells it for whatever. Valdo maps that have a chance to convert to maps, convert, drop converted maps and scarabs. Sure, the harvest crafting option to a chance that a non unique map with 50% chance has been removed. That means there's no more wing scarab farming. Monochrome underground forest exists as divination cards cannot be turned in. Interesting. Scarab rework. We've completely reworked the scarabs. All scarabs are now world drop and no longer have tiers. Some might be rarer than others, but the intention here is that, sure, in addition to reworking current available scarabs, we've also done 20 new scarabs. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well, the system is allowing you to heavily invest in one time of content, is reducing your capacity for variety. To address this, we've massively increased access to the content you're able to reliably shore. Incursion, delve, Betrayal and BC are now accessible through scarabs. There are more reliable investment options in the outlet tree. Not only this, you can now have Alva, Nico, June, and Einhardt all appear together in the same map. Okay. The 10 Atlas notable passives that cause your maps to have no change. They contain specific content now. Also cause scarabs under your map to not be that. Wait, wait. The 10 Atlas passive notables that cause your maps to have no chance to contain specific content now also cause scarabs found in your maps to not be of that kind of content these notables now have that's interesting so you could target farm scarabs is that what that's saying that you could target farm scarabs I think that's massively worth. Everything that drops scarabs is kind of pog now. It's also a question about you do need those to hit a hundred percent chance to have that content. I know Essence Farming got nerfed. I know I saw. I think it needed it, so it's fine. Not worth it in trade. Doing tier one sucks. It's annoying. Making boss character for league start. Uh, check the tattoo. I saw. I saw. It's insane. I think this change is really good. I like this change a lot. I haven't gotten there yet. I don't know what changed with Archmage. I haven't gotten there yet.
yeah base scarabs are only good for content that you don't spec into i don't think you're ever going to use scarabs anymore for content i think you're going to use like like if you're doing specific things right i don't know if you read my comment earlier but you can use all five of the same type of scarabs at all different tiers i heavily focus on one thing oh can you is that confirmed i was wondering about that my play is summoner i think specters are probably gonna be really good if you can get that specter helmet you can just jam four ultimatum scarabs i wonder what the blight ones do <laughs> i wonder what the blight ones do <laughs> the stream was frozen oh no Endgame got nuked this week. Disagree. I don't think it got nuked. I don't think it got nuked. I think it's more. Uh, yeah, in terms of it, it's entirely different. Yeah, but I don't think that means it's nuked. I see too many people say that it's nuked and unplayable. And I see a lot of the, the juicer fucking Andy's are bitching already. Yeah, I see a lot of people that are like, oh, the end game's fucked. There's no point. This is fucking stupid. It's a blank state. Yeah, I love that it's completely wide open now. I don't know how people are bitching when you literally see all the scarabs. You. I don't know how people are bitching when, like, they're just bitching. We have to solve the end game again. We do. They did nerf essences. You can't get the highest tier essence in tier one maps anymore. You have to do red tier maps now. The lead mechanic is a juice mechanic. We look through some of the atlas changes now. It's wild. Are there atlas changes in here? I haven't even like started to read this yet. You can almost get 100% blight and then just add it, 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 add it. There will be not less essences. The people that are invested into essences will be able to get tons of essences. I just salty suck with a no gladiator rework. I mean, they said I saw that part of the Q&A about the gladiator. I actually saw that part um, because I turned it on. Um, I, you're gonna, you're definitely gonna print essences without a doubt. I saw the gladiator rework and they said your options are quality of life and new shit or gladiator. And they were like giving a new ascendancy and reworking a new ascendancy is a huge, 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 huge time sink. And it only affects a smaller majority of players, which is true. It only affects people that want to play gladiator, which I get. I mean, I would love for Gladiator to be rework. But if I had to choose between Gladiator and what we got, I would choose what we got. I don't know if Bleed Bow is a log out. Essentially, Glad yeah, they know. I saw that too, that Gladiator is on the list, but there's... You guys got the quality of life and the changes that you got. And I don't say you guys as you guys, as you guys here, but people got the changes they want because they. People care. If y'all motherfuckers would stop bitching about the drama and the outside sources and use the trade website, y'all motherfuckers would have had a gladiator rework. Y'all motherfuckers didn't have to rely on outside game sources. They would have to put so many S, so many resources, so many resources to making your motherfucking life easier. Y'all motherfuckers had to go to others' discords and other trade websites because they fucked up and they didn't make it. So they like, you understand what I mean by you motherfuckers, man? It is. It's 100% trade player's fault. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
it's 100 percent the train flu it's it 100 percent is the people that scream the loudest yes yes it's 100 percent. the game is drastically changed because players let outside resources affect them and they screamed about it I haven't gotten that far. I haven't I haven't read anything yet in a minute in like a minute. I didn't say TFT. I just said outside resources. Things like having there used to be old trade websites that you'd have to use that would update more frequently. There's different di there's plenty of discords that you have to go to to trade. There's websites like PoE Stack, PoE Ninja. There are websites that you have to track things on like PoE Antiquity. Right? There are outside resources that players are forced to use to play the game. And people that bitch that they didn't want to use those outside resources, they were like, cool, we'll fix it. The reality is if players didn't have to rely on outside resources, we wouldn't need these changes and other things would get changed like gladiator but since we needed to rely on outside resources to have a better gaming experience they want to remove the need for outside resources which is better in the long run for all the players the problem is, is they can't do everything in one league they can't give you all the quality of life all the new end game all the league stuff all the crafting changes and then go fix the other stuff so there has to be a priority in which things are handled and gladiator is low on the priority list granted yes i'm sad i would love leadvo to be good again but if I don't need to go to POE stack because I don't need to go buy a motherfucking 10,462 fucking different sextants to put nine different things on a fucking map that I'm going to forget because I'm fucking stupid because I didn't value the map and then I forgot the deli orb and then I forgot the sextant, but I didn't put the sextant on because the sextant is only four use. But if I buy the 16 use, it doesn't fucking do anything because it's five times more expensive. I don't want to deal with all that. Right? Like, let me just go kill fucking mobs. Quit yapping, read faster. My job is to yap. I, 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 I have to yap. Jason files for the skill tree and Atlas tree are now available. Somebody go ping local identity and say, wake the fuck up with love. Doing a fucking meta game. Is the game actually the meta game? It's true. I agree with you. And I think removing the need for outside resources was perfect. Does that mean PoE Ninja isn't going to work anymore? No, it just... To, would you like me to put it as bluntly as possible? I, I, I can literally put this as blunt as possible. Please do. So many people relied on tft and it became such a problem that they are doing everything in their power to make sure you do not need to use things like tft if people just use the trade website and realize that they can use the trade website and made perfect use of the trade website and didn't have to rely on things like poe stack tft and other sources to get things done We're just timing that out. We're not talking about RMT. This has nothing to do about RMT. We don't care about RMT. We're talking about trade in a legitimate fashion within terms of service. Services are the only thing that I feel like they haven't solved yet. So things like, yeah, like five-way carries and stuff like that are the only things that I feel like they haven't solved yet. And beast in bulk, correct. And that still sucks. The idea that I have to use an outside resource to get things like bulk beast sounds terrible. I've never used anything about PoE trade. The problem is, the problem is, is while you've never used TFT or other outside resources, a large majority of the player base does not do that. A large majority of the player base goes to outside resources. 
and then a large majority of the player base and i say large but it's actually probably like a really really small percent of the player base spends so much of their time bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and i'm lazy as fuck and don't mind selling my bulk shit for 25 to percent less as long as they can press and listen to one click the problem see, that's the problem right potato that's the problem in a nutshell the problem is is that you should not need to have that convenience from an outside source that convenience should be in the game that's the problem that's the problem is in the current state of things we don't have that right that's the problem i also don't think that you should be lazy i think you should go sell your shit and make your real money and spend the extra 20 minutes doing it when you can literally buy anything because players do it for a couple of reasons one they do it for convenience um and two they think they're they're getting a deal you can't you you can't trust anybody in outside do you know how many times you can you've gone do you know how many times players have gone to outside resources that have vouching systems and you know how many times that vouch player just decides to fucking scam somebody all the time all the time it happens all the time and you know what then happens the guy who fucked you who has eight thousand fucking rating of positivity goes to the mods and says i didn't scam him he's lying and then the guy's like i have this proof and then that guy with eight thousand rating goes it's doctored who are they going to believe who are they going to believe? The guy with 8,000 rating or Jim Bob Dirtle fuck who shows up with a screenshot? That happened to me in D2JSP. Dude is a member for like 10 years. It's happened to me too. And when I use other outside stuff like that. Back when you used to use old school D2 trading websites. Yeah. It happens all the time. It's less likely that somebody who has 50 negative posts in their form thread removed by GGG publicly outing somebody as a scammer. But it's it's not up to GGG to remove the scammers at the end of the day, right? It's you to use your judgment. And if you get fucked, you get fucked. It's an open market trading system. Right? There's, there's zero need. There's zero need to use TFT. It's just TFT has created this system that they have marketed to players as the most convenient way to do things and content creators from back in the day have sold to you guys over and over the years that it is the best way to do things so the need and relevance for tft was an injustice or a, a, a old sir or like i don't know what the word is right like it's the harm that the content creators did by selling this service. The great thing is that POE is a completely open trading system. Yes. The bad thing is that complete. Yes, exactly. I mean, you get scammed in real life all the time. I mean, how expensive are eggs? Still buy them. <laughs> how expensive milk? Dumb motherfuckers gonna go pay $10 for a gallon of milk. I see it all the time. <laughs> Just don't be stupid. Like Legion 5 way a boss carries. There was already in game with TFK, he killed it and it went there. The relevance was like services. I mean, you could just, just ask your friends for help. And when you say I don't have friends, make friends or ask in world chat. You don't need to do Legion 5 ways for EXP. You don't, you don't. That is, that is the player, myself included, being a lazy sack of shit. TFT grow based on services. Yeah, you don't need to use outside resources for services. You can just ask in game. Like, you bought a five way because you were lazy, myself included. That's like the most efficient way to do it. By whose fucking standards? 
Yours that you were embedded in? No, it's not. It's fucking not. The most efficient way to do things is to not fucking die and to play the game. No, you're just brainwashed. What's up, bike? There's a million better ways to level. Motherfuckers are just lazy. It's so much more convenient. The word is convenient. It is convenient to pay a motherfucker that bots his five ways. Yes, it is a convenience. It is not the most efficient way. It is a convenient way. How efficient is it to go whisper fucking Jim fuck over here and be like, hey, Jim, I'd like to join your five way service. And Jim's like, sure, no problem, mate. Hold on. Then you join Jim for his fucking five way service. And Jim's like, we're going to start in 20 minutes. Fuck you mean we're going to start in 20 minutes, Jim. Jim's like, oh, I got to go milk fucking Henry over here for fucking three divines. Oh, Henry crashed in the middle of my fucking run. Gotta go wait for fucking Susie to accept my ad post. Can't go do the fucking five way because Jim fucked off and Susie needs a five way. Henry waiting. You know what? Henry fucking paid me. Henry, you fucking, you wait, Henry. You got, you paid for 10 runs, you shit bag. 10 runs, five minutes a run, not including posting time. Fuck off, Henry. Yeah, great. Just what I want to do. Wait for fucking Jim Bob over here to go re recruit fucking Susie Sally fucking Jimmy so that Henry can get experience. Henry, go run a fucking map, Henry. Literally did five ways last night. It worked out at the same time. See, you paid for convenience. You paid to jerk off at the same time. Yeah, you only pay for five ways if you're on a time crunch and you need to do something like, because it's like, like I pay for five ways. Yes, I do. I agree a hundred percent. I pay for five ways because while my five ways running, I can edit the YouTube videos that you guys like to watch. I pay for five ways because I can go make a fucking sandwich. I pay for five ways because I'm a fat, lazy shit. They just did. It's called Necropolis League. So you can play BDO? Yeah, I pay for five ways. So I go fucking do my rotation in BDO. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> Can't wait to target farm fortunate with my drop is full stack scarabs. I think it's going to be awesome. I think that's going to be awesome. You get an aneurysm. You have no fucking idea. Exactly. You pay for five ways to go watch my fucking YouTube videos. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I saw bike that I saw that you can like get power charges on a helmet using necropolis that there's like exclusive mods. Yeah. There was a picture. Hold on, bike. I'll show you. I said this earlier. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. There is a picture. Hold on. Yeah, it has exclusive mods to it. Yeah, see, bike. Look at this. Look, it has power charges on it with no influence. Because of the the graveyard shit, because Necropolis has it's because Necropolis has its own set of mods.
He said go to the Necropolis page. It's on there. Yeah, see, look. Gems can be socketed in this item, ignoring socket color. Spell suppression, armor evasion. 34% of damage taken recouped as life. 34% damage taken recouped as life. Bill, are you logging in or are you still being a salty little shit bag? Are you going to log in now, Bill? He's going to play for five minutes. I don't want him to play for five minutes. I want him to fucking stop being a crybaby and log in and play with his friends. All we want to fucking do is hang out with Balefire, but he's giving us the Shodokin treatment. I don't know. Both of you make a fucking decision. <laughs> I haven't gotten anywhere faster. <laughs> Shuriken's gonna unfriend me. I swear to fucking God. I'm gonna deserve it too for breaking his balls. And the helmet has power charges and effective curses. Bro, I was already logged in. I was just trying to explain that I could ignore the mechanic if I have enough players, but like no one was having my explanation. You can't ignore the mechanic. You have to, in you have to interact with it. You have no choice. Remember that one time two weeks ago you told me that it's too early to start figuring out League Start and I didn't listen. I practiced Tornado Shot. Did Tornado Shot get nuked? Absolutely cucked. Man, if only we waited. Remember? Wait. <laughs> Does this mean I can go message Palmer and be like, oh, you still play Tornado Shot there, buddy? <laughs> More like T shit. He's sad. Drake Sloan, Palmer, Lightning Arrow, boys. He's Lightning Arrow. And yeah, yeah, and Lightning Arrow is going to be shit this league because of the, the nature of the mechanic. Lightning air is not going to be good. Three seminar SSF runs on ball lightning and static tomes. Like five more in SRS. Did your, did your starter get saved? Mo movement speed cannot be modified below base value. What do you mean? Lightning air is no good. The mechanic. Think about the mechanic, right? The mechanic is going to make the game really hard. Who's trying to, what do you mean? Did you not watch, did, or did we watch? Movement speed's not actually, it's still pretty good though. This one's fucking great, by the way. If I want to make a mirror tier item with the Kravos mod, here's what I'll have to do and it won't be good. Get exclusive mods on a rare, a null down to the only mod so I can lock scour the item and make it magic, harvest synthesize, imprint back until I get triple influence, hard fucking roll, all three mods on them, craft implicit, starting with one mod, the exclusive mods, and have to lock, reforge, and imprint over and over again until I complete one side into meta crafting. Ah, isn't that what you log in for? every single time isn't that literally i already did this isn't that what you lock isn't that what you live for bike the fucking misery of racing to that ring like a fucking asshole now think about it bike not think about it now think about it now 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 you gotta wait until you figure out the exclusive mods and how to get them what's up muffin and then you gotta sit there like an asshole and try to ha fucking <laughs> seven days before you quit it's okay you can come play <laughs> what's up man 
You were right, by the way, Muffin. They, I told you, I told you they were not going to change that left click shit. They left it in. They left it in. Hunter's like going Wraith Lords for Helm Specters. I think my buddy Todd should do the same thing. I've been telling Todd. He was trying to, he's convinced, man. Just going to sell bodies this league? Are you going to play the song, let the bodies hit the floor the entire time? <laughs> Every time you're putting a grave into a fucking body into the grave. Or do you just let the John, like, is this league, is this like John Wick league? Where you just like leave John Wick playing in the background while you just like harvest corpses? Hey, yo, what up? What it is, my guy. I think these are really cool. I played Death South. I don't know what that is. Creating map mirrors your ends of the absolute nightmare this league. Mirror of Delirium and Ultimatum. Okay. You need I think this one's so cool. So I can do, so I can, I can choose Crimson Temple on my jungle. I can, I can favorite. You're telling me that I can favorite Jungle Valley. I don't even know if Jungle Valley's in. You're telling me that I can favor. I got the life-based jungles build up and running and it slaps. I know I want to play it. It looks really good. I want to, I want to test that healing hands now that it has the fire tag on it too. The, the new season of Last Epoch, you mean? Not that they ever riffed off forging potential, ever? You, oh, okay. Last Epoch. <laughs> Thanks. It's like, I saw a meme today. I was crying, dude. Hey, if it's a good idea, take it. Dude, I saw a meme today. I saw a meme. I was crying. I was fucking crying. It was like, thanks for letting us copy your homework. <laughs> it's fucking dead, dude. <laughs> All right. So question. Does this mean that I can favorite? You favor the four apothecary maps and haunted and then do toxic sewers for 80% more chance and 20% chance. Of okay. That's what I was that's what I was gonna ask. So I can literally go do toxic sewers and farm mage bloods. Does that mean that for high end juicer groups that the idea that headhunter and mage blood is just gonna be more common? Triple A companies won't move a muscle until the competition proves them wrong. Yes. Mage was the easiest unique these days to get. Well, didn't they also somebody told me they increased the drop chance globally of it by like 2%. Is that true too? Or did somebody blow smoke up my ass? 2.5%. That's huge. Want to start? I can do blights. Everything can do blights. The fracturing div card or might be more common. It should be. It's too rare right now. All right. I'm going to pretend like we didn't just get super sidetracked and go look at more notes because I haven't read any of this in like, I don't know, like God, how long has it been? Like 20 fucking minutes. It's been two hours of fucking nothing. There'll be support for the league. We've added four clusters that allow you to enhance gameplay, customize it, and meaningful eyes. These Necropolis clusters will not be available in standard leagues. It's fine. I wasn't going to say anything. 2.5. Wait, 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 wait. So the global drop chance isn't increased by 2.5%. It's 2.5 times more likely. Wait. Wait.
but 2.5 times more likely on 1% is shit. But if the drop chance now is 1%, Now it's 3.5. I mean, that's still huge, right? Then 80% increases, take it to 5. That's pretty big. Mirrors are going to be a thousand divines again, without a doubt. Scarab is going to be off the fucking charts expensive. And everything else is going to be dog shit cheap. Mirrors are going to be absurdly expensive again, just so you know. Remember, remember this league that just happened or the league that we're in right now and everybody was like, oh my God, shit's so expensive. This is fucking miserable. It's going to be the same thing again. demand for these new items are going to go out of this world what are people going to play if tornado shots nuked it's not raining divines um i don't know about that i don't i don't know about that i don't know about that brands didn't brands also get nuked out of orbit Where's Zebu? We'll have to ask him. They're going to play Rain of Arrows of Artillery Traps. Mm, that guy leaked everything. It's going to get fixed. That guy leaked everything. It's still going to get fixed. That's definitely good. Now that it's known, right? Penance Brand is only 65%. Oh, yeah. You still just play Penance Brand then. Yeah, you just play Penance Brand. Yeah, without a doubt. It's only 65%. You just play Penance Brand. 100%, without a doubt. You don't know why Stormbrain got fucked? Because Zebu. You're in shambles? I haven't even, like, finished Passionist. I'm just gonna go to our people. Uh, add a new keystone. All corpses. I don't, I don't know. I don't like this. I guess this is fine for, like, farming the bases i think this is what you're gonna have to do bike all corpses with unresolved anguish in your maps have revealed a random craft when buried i think you're gonna have to do this to get bases your maps randomly have between zero and 80 percent modifier effect i think this one's really interesting Tornado shit being brought down a few pegs from completely broken to still absurd is fine with me. Bike, you say this and I guarantee you will. I would bet money on it. This one's really interesting too. This is really interesting. I don't know how I feel about this yet. Your maps are randomly between 80 and 0 percent modifier. Okay. Unwavering vision, which grants 20%, but makes it so scarabs cannot be found in your maps. Your maps cannot be modified by fragments other than divine vessels. This is not good. Rue was saying the affliction. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. You know, I've had so much IRL going on this week, dude. I, I wouldn't even lie to you. 
added a new keystone atlas pass of unwavering vision which grants 20 atlas passive skill points but makes it so scarabs cannot be found in your maps and your maps cannot i don't think this is very good 7th gate growing hordes all hands are all gone twist of fate now causes your corrupted rare maps and map options to wait twist of fate passives now cause your corrupted rare maps and map crafting options flying to them to modify objects to and open all maps modified in this way having one of the three additional random modifiers on them oh oh Oh, so you can't do Val Temple shenanigans anymore, right? They made Seventh Gate Baseline? That's huge. The number of additional bosses somebody to play Keystone is now higher if there are fewer monsters remaining in the map. That's a nerf. That's a nerf. But that's actually not that bad. This will be really good on linear maps like Silo. This will be really good on like Silo maps. Or like Toxic Sewer maps. How bad is it? It's logged the fuck in. Patch notes don't help. I enjoy the trading aspect of the game, the crowd, but after a week, I'm going to get bored. Just play SSF. XD without Circle of Fortune. Dude, you know what you should play with us, Bike? No meme. Black Desert Online. We've been playing a lot of BDO. Log the fuck in. I know what I'm playing. We we've been playing it pretty much nonstop in the discord for the past like week and there's people like even right now playing it and streaming it and go hang out with them. They're pretty good guys. They're just axing power that you have to replace it with different power. Out of three scarab cluster of the Alice passenger that two small passive and four percent increased scarabs on your map. Nine hours that cost scarabs to be 100% more likely to be essence beyond. Oh, that's fuck. I love this. I love this. Add a new scarab cluster to the Atlas Passive Tree with remarkable relics and chittering champion notables. Remarkable relics cause scarabs in your house to be more likely, but chittering causes the final map to have 20 additional scarab. I, dude, I love this. I love these. It provides unique monsters in your map with 200% of scarabs. This is fucking cool. All right, Scar is gonna be so common, dude. Add a new Scar cluster to the Alice Pastry with notable skittering swarms. Provides 12% increased Scar center on your map while too small. That's awesome. I think you tagged the wrong guy. I think Ginger just accidentally tagged the wrong guy. Oh, maybe not. Maybe? The problem is he only plays one build. Like, you can't fault the guy if he likes one thing. He replied as well. Oh, I, I missed it. My apologies. There's a lot going on right now.
Hopefully they update things by tomorrow. Added a new passive chiseled perfection with now present increase 3% per five quality. These way the new uber fragments no what's the wording what's the wording this is interesting added a new passive chisel which provides three percent increased effects of modifiers on your map for five percent quality Hold on, I gotta screenshot something, but I don't want to leak it. It causes red beasts in your map to have a 50% chance to break free. Beasts which break free in your map gain bestial rage. And defeating breeze grants hunters cunning per rage defeated the two. Wait, what is this? Wait, what? This doesn't make sense. It causes your, it causes red beasts in your map to have a 50% chance to break free. Beasts which break free in your maps gain bestial rage. Defeating beasts grants hunters cunning per rage beast targeted. What does this mean? Why would you want your beast to break free? So Syndicate members obtain additional equipment when appearing in your maps with 20% more rarity of items from in your maps per equipment if they have. The cluster has five horse massive. We don't know what Hunter's Cunning is. Okay, that makes sense. Can I fucking help you? Which cause you to gain demonic power and defeating? What the fuck is demonic power? It no longer causes a strong box in your maps to have a six percent chance to be obvious. Instead, it causes a strong box in your maps to have a ten percent. Oh, that's huge! Map bosses have hundred percent chance to drop a conqueror map. That's pretty massive. Wait, it causes rare monsters in your map to have a fifty percent chance, increased chance to drop scarabs per monster modifier affecting them. Interesting. The perpetual search atlas passive replaced with new just in time. 20% chance to gain Alva. We don't care. These are all just the 
the chance modifiers, right? Previously, 10%. <laughs> Previously, so you can pretty much 100% have deli mirrors on every map. Go back to the beast one, two hearted. The great migrating exercise replaced with two hearted hunt. It causes red beasts in your maps to have a 50% chance to get a modifier to provide a chance to not be consumed when sacrificed at the blood altar. And causes red beasts in your map to have an additional beast in your modifier. The three small beasts. Ah! Oh! I mean, Ubers, I said this during watching the reveal. I, Ubers just aren't meaningful. There's just no fucking reason, period, to do Ubers. They're so fucking pointless and useless. Like, Ubers right now are the dumbest shit. But if this changes and they're harder and all that shit, that'd be exciting. You're going to be farming Ubers? You know what you're playing it. No, I don't think it's gonna be a pain, right? You know what they didn't mention blight? I was thinking the same thing, bro. I really want to know what the blight changes are. Explosive trap or ice trap. So there's gonna be I think the I think the order of which we do things are gonna be like this. There's gonna be Uber farmers, regular boss farmers. Tier 17 farmers, tier 16 farmers, right? That's going to be like the order of operation. The tier 16 farmers are going to sell the tier 17 maps to the tier 17 guys. The tier 17 guys are going to farm the fragments to sell to the uber farmers. The regular boss farmers are going to farm the regular bosses. The uber farmers are going to farm the uber bosses. The scarabers, no, I think you're going to get more scarabs than ever before. It's just harder to do scarabs. It has a higher cost of entry. Correction. Correction. The mana cost change is brutal to traps. What mana cost change? The fragments are only for Ubers. Can we get out of there? No reduced mana cost on jewels and flask. The mana cost kills a lot of builds. I still don't know what you're talking about. Essence monoliths and white maps can now spawn a maximum of screaming. I actually think this change is really good. <laughs> I think this is really good. The BC recipe for gaining one gives five. I think this is really good too. Her transformer guild into a wing has been replaced with a recipe that transforms an amulet into a talisman. That's fine. Hillock now gives essence scarabs, harvest, anarchy, ritual beyond. Oh, dude, betrayal is going to be so fucking good. They did. They nerfed essence. That's so ass. It's pretty good, actually. It's pretty good. Reality has a good point. What did he say? I think essences are going to be better than ever. I think essences are going to be better than ever because we have scarabs. You might literally just be able to do scarab stuff. And you just do yellow maps. Like, you just... The, the, the days of doing white maps are over. 
see well yellow and red maps can have a maximum tier of shrieking you just do fucking yellow maps you just do tier six maps nothing's changed the same thing we lose the atlas since duplication atlas no how, what how do you know Shrieking Essinger maps will be duplicated when early. Wait, no longer has monsters or persons or will be duplicated or corrupted. We don't know what the scarabs do. The crystal resonance atlas notable passive now causes the map boss to gain a random essence modifier from any imprisoned monster slain in your maps. It causes remnant of corruption to use on imprisoned monsters in your maps to replace all essences with one of the essences of the imprisoned monster. It no longer has monsters imprisoned by shrieking essences. Yellow maps make the beast pool a little worse. Yeah, I would just assume I'm I'm going to operate that the scarabs are insane. I'm just going to operate that the scarabs are insane. Just a different puzzle to solve. Yeah, I I people need to just accept the fact that the game is different. And that, like, I don't get how Crystal of Resonance. If I'm understanding this correctly, you could just convert all the essences into X type. If I understand this correctly. So Crystal of Resonance at now causes a map boss to be granted a random essence modifier from any prism that you slain and causes remedy corruption using a prism modifier to replace all essences with the essences of the imprisoned monster. So like, So if I'm understanding this correctly and there's a loathing essence, if there's four or five on them and one of them is loathing and you corrupt it, they're all loathing. So it's insane. Right? If it hits something you don't want, then it hits something you don't want, you go next. Who cares? <laughs> Harvest it. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like a lower tier? Upgrade it. Who cares? <laughs> upgrade it. <laughs> you just upgrade it, my guy. <laughs> like if it, if you're saying like if it hits like like a screaming versus a shrieking, right? Then you get like sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but like if it hits a shriek, a screaming versus a shrieking. And you get six shriek or screamings, then you just upgrade it. I don't know where. I don't know how to find the loot conversion stuff. I don't know where the loot conversion stuff is. Do they have a lengthy video? Uh, I don't anymore. Monster balances. Rare monster item bonus mechanics are now rare in the following item bonus against them removed. Items dropped or converted to gems. That's fine. Items dropped and converted to scarabs. Feels bad. Items dropped are all white sockets. That shit. That was awesome. Items dropped are duplicated. Slain monsters give increased experience. Slain monsters give increased gem experience. Why would they remove them? 
Why would they remove that? That was awesome. Cycling damage has been reworked and it's now adaptive resistance since monsters become resistant to the highest damage type. Sure, whatever. Torment of Spirits now have roughly 10% more life at level 68. Lyrica's thing. Sure. Did I miss it? The dupe is a huge loss. XP is huge. Yeah, they just moved into the league mechanic, right? The Blessing of Moosh card. Crafted level 21 transfigured gem. That's pretty cool. These are cool. Tattoos are back. Wait, are they all not here? Are all the tattoos not in? Are only certain tattoos in? Stack decks no longer drop. The void is a boss exclusive. Glass can now be corrupted using veils. The veils, whatever. I mean, players need to understand that, like, it's gone, GG, go next. Like, it's irrelevant. Like, stop fucking crying over spilled milk, right? We don't know what tattoos are in, but these say tattoos. Oh, these are tattoo changes. Never mind. They're tattoo changes. The Rallakesh boots no longer provide 30% increased movement speed. Why? Why? <laughs> Actually a good change. How is that a good change? Boots are dead. Go next. The Rallakesh nerf makes sense. Uh, explains to me like I'm five. Yeah, the boots are terrible. Ignore them. You don't want them. Yeah, please put 5C. Yeah. The Dreamer Notable no longer gives 20% increased maximum mana. Oh, that's cool. That's so shit. Detonate mines triggered while moving, which replaces you gain fibers. I actually, dude, I'll tell you what, man. Do people like walking slow? <laughs> oh, God. People are dumb, dude. I don't know. The 30% the doesn't do anything. Anybody, the boots are not dead. The, who cares about the movement speed? It's it, my, my, my entire point was it doesn't make sense that that's the change. That 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 part being the change doesn't make sense. Like, why remove thirty? Like, of all the things you could have done to the boots, removing thirty percent movement speed when you have yeah eight frenzy charges. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. 
We don't know what the drop rates are. We have no. We don't. We don't know. We don't know if they change the drop rates on them. I don't think they're ever going to tell us that they're changing drop rates on anything. They could be changed. You have no idea. It's because you said to stand still for the buffs. Who stood still? You weapon swapped. Well, ho hopefully initial a thought like me and think it's a massive nerf for their cheap. That's the plan. I would love everybody to think it's a massive nerf and to list them bitches for 5C so I can log in hex blast mines. They fix the weapon swap stuff? Yeah, I know. Both tattoos are gone. You have no... Uh, how do you know that? How do you know what tattoos are in or not in? Never mind. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, cool. I thought you... Got it. I'm an idiot. I need to learn how to read. Hex Blast did not. It's fine. There's nothing in here for Hex Blast. You were bills would just slap on Rallakesh and he fix all charges related stats and there's strong minds that represent extreme loss of penalty of bills. No, the 30% doesn't do anything. The 30% is literally useless. Love your videos. It's super educational. Thanks, man. Yeah, the 30% is literally useless. Nobody cares. Yeah, I've heard that they're the overlap on explosive traps fucked. You don't care about the 30% movement speed, even in Sanctum, because you used phase run and haste on a trigger. Like, you didn't care. Or you just flame dashed everywhere shield charge everywhere like the the 30 percent movement speed is like so irrelevant it's not it's not relevant at all it's it's, it's fucking it's dumb no now you just automate that bitch sir hello what the fuck you mean you just automate that bitch sir hello all right go to the bathroom then we'll read more of this shit
Hello. What have I missed? thoughts so far dude i'm so i'm excited out of my fucking mind <laughs> dude, I'm, i am excited out of my fucking i can't wait i am so hyped it is dumb i'm new with affliction uh it depends on which ones are in but yeah they'll be insane What do you think was better for being a player? I have no idea. I don't follow any of them. <laughs> I don't care enough to follow any of them. <laughs> like to follow who's better at what. Which is the one that always wins? Who's the one that always wins? One of the one of those guys always wins everything, right? Do I have the same person? Oh, so I, had no, I had no fucking idea. <laughs> there you go, man. That's how little I fucking know. I only know that some content creators, all I know is that there's one or two content creators that have spent their entire day shit talking and subtweeting content creators. And uh, I've lost a lot of respect for some content creators. But that's a whole different topic for another day, not for Twitch. Um, yeah, dude, I don't know, man. I don't even need to read the rest of these. I, I fucking control F hex. Saw nothing was changed. Um, yeah, I just, I, I fucking, I want to read this. You have a 40% wait. Ah, oh, this is insane. Sick. Log in blight. The small passives that create your map. The small blight passive size. Pa ah, it's a nerf! Oh, yeah, I saw it. It's pretty cool. Kind of a hundred percent blight on the Alice chain. That's fucking awesome. Did you read Archmage? I don't care enough about Archmage. Did he get nerfed? Archmage is dead. Cool. Whatever. Who cares? So I think I'm very different. Um, I think I'm very different in terms of what you guys like and what I like. If a skill gets nerfed, I don't give a fuck. If a skill gets changed, I don't give a fuck. You know? Like, if all that shit changes, I don't give a fuck. What do I care about? I don't know. What's new? What's exciting? What can I play? What can I try? What can I explore? You know? What skills are still good? They removed all the content from Blight. Thoughts? Sweet. Login Sanctum. Login Sanctum. Archmage isn't dead. I'm not smart enough to know if it is or isn't dead. Absolution, anime guardian, anime weapon, Archmage can no longer support brand or orb skills. Okay. No longer has supported skills gain added lightning damage equal to 75% of the mana cost. If mana cost is not higher than the mana cost you spend or supported skills have base, now has supported skills gain added on reserves maximum mana up to 19% support skill gems have added lightning damage equal to 10% so you can't do helmet shenanigans right 
Can you say that without knowing what items you get when the crop was or what new? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. It's new content. It's new stuff. It doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck. Canic seems cool. Atlas tree passive changes seem cool. It doesn't matter to me. Three passive trees? Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> that are meaningful. There isn't a lot of new things, not a lot of buffs that are meaningful. In terms of skills, gems, and stars. No, it's all the same. The, the meta is the exact same. Nothing's changed. Everything's exactly the same. It's, exa it's all the same. Nothing's changed. Tornado shot changed. Meh. Lock in place animation now. Same animation as the puncture skill gem. What does that mean? looking for a ranger that has gear on Literally fine. Who cares? Doesn't even matter. It's not going to affect anything. It'll be fine. People are overreacting. What are your thoughts on the new crafting system? It looks like a better version of ROG. That should be super strong then though. It's going to be fucking out of this world. Actually fucking insane and cracked out of its mind. It's just going to be a bitch to interact with. I mean, this part sucks. This part's huge. So gonna lease our hex blast? Yes. Back to bone shatter by Sunday? No. Bone shatter shelf. Thing of the past. Why question mark? Why is it shelved? Because I don't play the same builds 10 times. 
What parts of it make you think that'll be insane? That part. That's a helmet with power charges without influence. That's a body armor with 34% damage taken recouped his life. That part, those unique modifiers specifically to the mechanic. With a double influence, I make a head sick. How do you can't you can't double influence it? You would lose you would lose the power charge. But you can put Eldritch implicits on that helmet, like Eater and Exarch. Sniper's mark on nurse in case you're planning on using it to sleep. Irrelevant. I didn't play Sentinel, so I don't know anything about Sentinel. I know Sentinel had modifiers, but I don't know what they were. But yeah, I assume there's gonna be a bunch of cool modifiers that we can get on items. And that'll make it a lot of fun. I'm tired. You could probably get plus two power charges on helmets now because now you just fucking get a helmet with power charge and then you Warlord slam for fucking more power charge. XD. One second. You think a multi strike build would go far next? No clue. I haven't looked into it. That I would be lying to you. Yeah, you can make synthesized items too, which would be insane. Yeah, I uh, I will not lie to you. The idea of what I want to do, if I do it, has not been touched or changed. What I want to do also seems really good um, in terms of the grand scheme of things. Well, Cortex is going to be way more common now. You can just go farm Cortex inside of the Cortex maps, which will be really good too. General's Cry got buffed too. That's insane. Cortex not drop. They, that change has been a long time, though. That's been a long time change, though. Top pick might be Bama. Do it up, man. Shadow's cry a good starter. Uh, I've tried it. It's very hard to play properly. Not even the boss now. What do you mean? Not even the boss now. The vivid memory, ah, uh, final boss in each map. The nose on the Atlas tree are gone. What are you talking about? You get cortex from other maps now. The nodes are gone in the Atlas tree. 
Yeah, you get three. This node is unchanged. Or is that gone? So then you're going to get it when you kill. So then you'll get it when you kill. That's the whole tier 17 change. Yeah. So then you get it when you fight the Uber boss. No, from when you kill the Uber boss, what is the fragments? We don't know what, you don't know what the drop pool is on the boss. There's no drop pool listed anywhere for what he drops. And they said that. Cortex drops from synthesized maps now? Yeah, which it should. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. You don't know what... You don't know what unique items are going to drop yet. You don't know, like... You know? Hello. Hello. They said one of the big things they said in the video that I really agree with. One of the things they said in the video that I really, really, really agree with is that Uber bosses should drop loot specific to them. And that Uber and non Uber shouldn't share a loot pool. And they said in the video that Shaper drops like three or four items and then Uber Shaper drops the other four items. Non Uber drop his trash items. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You still, yeah, you still need dying, son. Those gloves are still really good. Those gloves are still really good. A lot of builds use those gloves. The only semi-decent semi one. Those gloves are 1C though. Right now, because you're playing with the idea... They're 1C right now because you're playing in a world where they drop consistently. You're playing in a world where they drop consistently. Yes, you're right. In this current iteration of the game, the economy is one way. The economy will not be the exact same come next league when players maybe don't run regular shaper anymore. Because why would you? Because they have all the same mentality. You guys have to stop. I dislike it's the same fragments. What do you mean it's the same fragments? That's not the same fragment. That's a different fragment. What are you talking about? That's a completely different fragments. Fuck you. What are you on about, mate? Is it better to go a Boston character this league? Why is it better to go a Boston character? You need the four plus that one for Uber. So I don't know if you need the four plus this one for Uber or if you need five of this one. I think you need five of the same fragment. So I think you need five of these. So there's an argument that this is a heavy mapper league. There's a big argument that... So this is... This is this is the order of operations. Uber shaping farmers, people that only run Uber shaper, will need tier 17 farmers. And tier 17 farmers will need tier 16 farmers. And people who are too fucking bad to do this will need to do regular shaper. 
And regular Shaper needs people to do fucking Shaper maps to get the fragments to sell to these dipshits. And these dipshits and these dipshits have to run these bosses so that the Uber Elder dipshits can go farm shit. So you need this guy to funnel this guy and this guy to funnel this guy who funnels this guy and these fuckers to funnel this fucker. I know which finger is which. What do you do with the 11 figure? Shove it up your ass. So you think those fragments, they drop, read the fucking patch notes. Watch the goddamn video. They drop, read it on the screen. <laughs> I did, you didn't. Uber fragments only come from tier 17 maps. Imagine farming this SSF. Why? What do you mean? You just get, you just get watchstones and do tier 16 maps and tier 16 maps drops tier 17 maps. Think you forgot your meds. You're right. I did. What's the best league starter? I don't know. The number of times I said watch the fucking video this week. Aura bot. Conversion trap. I don't know anything about that, so I can't comment on that. Yeah. He should have four link with no gear doing 95. Uh, dude, I don't follow anything he does, nor do I care. No offense. I mean, if it works and you play it, congratulations. Sure. I I don't know. I haven't followed it, man. I don't look. Listen, this is what's going on in terms of what builds are going to be good or what's going to be good. I will only know and understand the build that I'm going to be doing. And I will only understand what I plan on doing until I learn, because the whole game is changing, right? Everything's changing. RMR is changing in terms of things. Skills are changing. What to farm is changing. The order of farming is changing. The way we're going to farm is changing. The Atlas tree is changing. The passive tree might be changing. Like, I don't know. I don't know shit, right? And until shit's updated, I can only work off of the knowledge of things that I'm going to do until I learn and understand all of the new changes. Right? So as much as I would love to be able, like I have POE planner opened up on another screen and I keep refreshing it, hoping that they update it today. Cause usually POE planner updates before everybody else. So I'm hoping that POE planner updates by morning. So in morning I could start like figuring out my runs. I think the Alice train having three of them is gonna be good. I definitely do. I also would like to know 
Yeah, they're removing RMR from uh flask right mana cost that's what i'm thinking about this one right The Veiled modifier that provides reduced mana cost of skills during effect can no longer be unveiled or crafted on Flask. No reason to the Alistair if you have Sanctum. I don't think... Dude, I am telling you right now. Like... Heck blast mapping? Yeah, you tier 17 straight line. What if we get some giga mana cost reductions on new mods? You could be, yeah, we don't know, you know? For sure, that's a strong, strong, strong. I'm, I will tell you this, in the morning, I plan on having a plan and starting to figure it out. Y'all motherfuckers are worried about so much shit. What's going to happen when you go into mud flats and you get one tap by fucking ghosted Roas? <laughs> What's your plan then? Do you just log the fuck out? Yes, don't be a pussy, Herman. When's DVD? Uh, 12 days. Wait, you get a new in easier instance? I plan on waiting till tomorrow for you to plan on planning your starter. I already know my starter. I already know exactly what I'm doing. I just have to formally write it down. Uninstall and log out. They did. It should, I'm assuming to be updated tomorrow. I just looked, it's not updated yet. And I know for sure. I am way too fucking tired today to, to wait. I'm going to give it, I'm going to, I'm going to stall for like another like 40 fucking minutes and talk about what I'm doing. And then if nothing's updated or changed, I'm going to bed. And by go to bed, I mean play BDO until four o'clock in the fucking morning. Or well, I'm going to go talk to and figure out if we're actually doing group play or if I'm just getting smoke blown in my ass. Then I'm going to go play BDO until four o'clock in the fucking morning. Then when I wake up, hopefully everything's updated if not we're just gonna do test runs of xbox blinds go to bed with you die die At the same time, so you're also gonna play BDO until four o'clock in the morning. Max roll, Max roll just tweeted the patch notes have come and we've got you covered. Jesus, holy fuck! Oh no. Did you get early access to these two? No, I didn't get it. I didn't get early access to anything. I ha I am seeing a lot of tweets from the content creators that says PoE2 is really good.
I am seeing a lot of tweets from content creators that PoE2 is really good. So I'm I'm pretty excited. So, yeah. I don't know. I would like to do a run now, but like I don't know if I feel like trying to load up and do act one, two, and three. I figure what I'll do is I'll uh something spellblades to play. I think I really want to play Hex Blast just so I can like boss with it too if I want to like go blow up a fucking boss or not. Cause isn't it also like really good for bosses? Or do we just like log in like ice trap? Ice mine? I don't know. I don't know. We just log in tornado shot. Right? Or whatever the fuck this is, Sacred Wisp. I'm really, dude, I'm really excited, man. I can't wait. I'm really excited. Sacred Wisp sounds great. I really want to know what the, the Scarab changes are to Blight and Essence. And I really, 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 really wish they gave us that. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I really wish they gave us essences. The end game DPS with Hex Blast? I mean, we're always going power charge stacking, right? Like, we're never not playing it as a power charge stacker. Right? We're always... We're always playing it power charge stacker. We're always doing shit like this. We always end up here. <laughs> We always end up here. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but minus 30% movement speed seems so bad. The fuck are you on about? Hell, you're, you have to be trolling me, right? Even if you're sanctuming, who cares? Right? You don't give a shit. Because even if you're sanctuming, right? I'm only... Dude, my plan is to only do it until Mage Blood and then I'm fucking off, right? Right? So, like, this is how fast you're moving. Right? And this would, this would be the... So, like, wait. How, how fast is this? So, this is 269% movement speed right now. Right? And then minus 30%. So, this, this, this adds 30%. So, if we take 30% off the boots... So we would be at 240. So th we this is what we would be, and this is what we would be with the boots. And this is this is the part. Like, sure, this says 240. It goes to 210, right? Right? So like. Like, even if we lost, it would still be this, right? And this is removing, this is removing 100% movement speed. So this is removing 100% movement speed. And then if we put this back on. Right? 
<laughs> like, like, I unfortunately, I can't simulate taking the 30% off this, but like, <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Don't use it. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, so this is 240. There you go. 240 down to 212. It's the same thing, right? So this is this is without 30% movement speed on the boots. Right? So it's one Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, right? And then if I do this and I put the movement speed back on, which would be the 30% difference, it becomes one Mississippi two, one Mississippi two, one Mississippi two, one, <laughs> like, it's fine. Like, I, the thing, I feel like, the most impactful way to have nerfed these boots and this is going to sound crazy would be to add a maximum amount so like counts as having maximum of endurance frenzy and power charges maximum amount cannot exceed six right because you're you're talking about one two three four five five six seven that's not maximum that's minimum seven is it eight power charges right now it's like eight power charges right now Nine. Counts is having charges equal to 50% of your maximum rounded up. Yeah, there you go. They nerfed Headhunter by nerfing Soul Eater? Oh, it's 12. I have 12. I have 12. I don't know where the other three are coming from. Oh, three minimum. Yeah, three base. Spell damage from modify 3% more. <laughs> yeah, I, headhunt, dude, headhunter is going to be fine. Headhunter is going to be just fine. Be slightly cheaper until people realize it's just fine. This happens every league. Motherfuckers go crazy. They're like, oh my god. They're near like, oh my god, you're right. It's shit. And they're like, yeah. I'm fucking idiots. Wait, how are these motherfuckers getting? Oh, Awaken Blasphemy. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, this Blasphemy shit's nuts. This guy doing the same thing? He is. You're going to be able to feed your children. Not only are you going to be able to feed your children, but you're also going to be able to pay me child support. Scarab Farm is like, yes. Our damage is easy. Oh, yeah, without a doubt.
Oh, without a doubt. The league's gonna be fine. The league's gonna be great. People are gonna find cool, crazy shit, and you have to refigure out the meta now and refigure out the end game, and it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. Thinking the family grave, I think that's cool too. Yeah, no, I think essences are gonna be really good. I'm really excited for Blight, dude. I'm telling you, I have a feeling Blight, bro, I have this feeling that Blight Scarabs are gonna be so logged the fuck in. So logged the fuck in. What's really cool is I really like the idea that, um, which mastery do we lose? How are we feeling about essences? Log the fuck in. The crafting system looks way too much RNG. It looks RNG until you figure it out. I think you lose the AOE too. We lost the one you have. Which one did we lose? Does it tell us which one we lose? I'm really tired. I'm sorry. I feel terrible. Oh, perfect. So we just do all the testing without the area of effect for each mine that we have. Detonate goes back on left click for testing purposes fucking hex blast gets slotted back in I need more mana. Still an occultist? Yes. No reason not to. Because the crafting from the necropolis, why would it die? You're still going to need to do tons and tons and tons of harvest shit. And they have a cyclone? Didn't even look. Sick level three bill, it's level seventy seven. I don't think you have to rush either way. As long as the gamblers don't leave. Of the mines, did they change that? I've already started tuning it out. I don't even hear it anymore, to be honest with you. Present D to Denny? Nope, I have it on left click because left click will simulate the mine mastery. Because the mind mastery says that it detonates when you move. And that's what this is doing. Because it's casting the detonate every time you move. So it'd be the same thing. So insane because you just brand recall after leap slamming into the pack and leap slam away and the pack blows up. That's cool. That's super cool. So yeah, in the morning we'll start doing test runs. Would you like the whole like Eater Exarch 
fucking bullshit. So, but yeah, that's the plan in the morning. In the morning, we'll we'll start doing we'll do runs. With the new essence nodes, oh, oh, I gotta go edit a YouTube video too now. Fuck, I forgot. I'm gonna go edit a YouTube video too now. I have to find the press release kit for Affliction. Ugh. Shit. Or Necropolis? Gotta be a press release kit somewhere, right? At the bottom? Thank you. Tomorrow, I'm gonna do the painstaking job of making custom leveling filters. Oh, make mine too. Thank you, reality. I never know where to find those damn things. All right, I'm way too tired. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm exhausted as fuck. On a bad run, that's really good. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll we'll figure it out. Tomorrow we'll start to plan it all out. We'll get it all working. We'll figure out where we're going, what we're doing. We'll start doing the test runs. We'll and we'll start putting together a tree. I'm gonna build a tree. I think. Um, how much time do you think the lead mechanic will add to the campaign? Uh 15 seconds a zone times a hundred zone, maybe an hour or two. I mean, you can like math it out, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve zones. We will skip the lead mechanic. No. What am I building? Hex blast, I think. So if it's 12 zones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And each of those zones takes 10 seconds. That's 120 seconds to set it up, assuming you do it in 10 seconds. So it's 120 seconds. That's two minutes added to the act. And then 12 zones and say the lead mechanic adds two minutes to each zone. That's 24 minutes because you're killing shit and interacting with shit that you shouldn't be killing. So that's 24 minutes, right? So 24 minutes plus two minutes is 26 minutes. So you're looking at like another like 20 minutes an act. Maybe assuming you're slow, assuming you do things, assuming the lead mechanic slows you the fuck down. Ten to fifteen minutes total time or total per act. I think your act time goes up. I think your act time goes up a lot. three to eight seconds interacting per zone, maybe like five seconds for a hard pack. The problem is, is I think the game is going to be hard and a lot of players who are like silly are going to struggle and it's going to take them a little longer. The This change will only really interact the players who are like slower at the campaign and a little worse at the campaign and struggle. First five acts. I'm basing my yeah exactly and I, I and I'm basing it on like the average Joe right. 
three days and 20 hours. I think if you're, I think if you're a four hour Andy, you'll be there in five, maybe four forty-five, four and a half. If you're an eight hour Andy, um, I would just expect it to be day two. I think most people who make it to maps, most average players who make it to through the campaign on day one should plan for day two. Uh, that's my plan. Oh, I'm not going to bust my ass. If I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. You can't really test the, the slow, the slowdowns. I just have to make sure I one shot shit. That's my plan. Make sure I kill shit. So we'll see. I was going to say, is there an Atlas plan? I have no Atlas plan until POE planner is updated. As soon as POE planner gets updated, I will have an Atlas plan. And as of right. Yeah, as of right now, it's not updated. It's always the same. You blight. Until gear. Nothing changes. Oh yeah, my plan is to log in hex blast unless I don't know, unless we do group shit. I don't know. There's a real world where I like log in for like two days as like support and then re-level on day three. Like rerun the campaign on day three. It's like a real thing. But I think I'm gonna base everything right now around playing Hex Blast and all the videos around Hex Blast and stuff. And if I log in late, I log in late. Like if I log in Hex Blast late, I log in Hex Blast late, right? I don't know. I'm not really too too worried about it. I am just fucking my brain is shot and I wanna like start the leveling process and start figuring it out, but like I can't do that because I'm too tired right now. And a video to edit. I already recorded the video. Get some sleep then. That's what I'm going to do in like a second. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, chat. This is the plan. I'm gonna get up in the morning. We're gonna make coffee. We're gonna log the fucking hex blast. Exploding trap. I have no feelings on it. Chat, thank you. Also, awesome, amazing, beautiful. Thanks for all the bits, love, tips, and subs. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the follows. See you in the morning. So for our sure, maybe. After I'm gonna go slow for the first round or two to just like take notes and map it out. But I'll be back in the morning. Farewell, friends. Good night.